Lobos of New Mexico. BYU has lost four of their last five games here at Cougar Stadium, dating back to a year ago, and that's Steve Pagador, number 80. And a penalty marker goes down as Pagador moves it to the 24-yard line, brought down there by number 41, Spencer Reed, on the special teams for BYU, but we have a penalty marker back at the 15-yard line. It's going to be an illegal block in the back right away. Coach Franchoni talked about getting off to a great start in the kicking game. That's probably not what he had in mind. 22 yards on the return. Mike Pereira, the referee today. Well, the quarterback for the Lobos of New Mexico, Stoney Case, and he has had a great career, and he hopes to cap it off with a terrific senior season. Five touchdowns, five interceptions, and folks, here is the New Mexico all-you-can-eat Offensive line, Tyner at 307, Allen at 363, Turner at 290, Crowder at 301, and Mummert at 283. That's a bunch of guys you don't want to go out to dinner with, folks. <laughs> Not if you're picking up the tab. No, they got long arms and a sharp fork. There's Stony Case, New Mexico will take it. First and ten on the seven-yard line. And off first man through right up the middle. For New Mexico was Chris Shelton, the fullback. <laughs> Young at tailback, Shelton, the fullback. Sloan's a tight end. Wesley and Perlman, the wide receivers. As the Lobos will send trips to the far side, the motion man now to the near side. On second down and eight. Case looking to throw, wants to go to his tight end, and it's overthrown. The intended receiver, six foot seven inch David Sloan. Stan Ross, number 50, was back on the coverage, and that was six seven against six feet. Well, excellent coverage downfield. BYU wants to try to match up on this big tight end with a linebacker. Case is looking to his left first, has to come back to the backside of the pattern. You can see Ross is right on the money with his coverage, has to be a perfect throw to knock it in there. That'll bring up a third down and eight for the Lobos. Ball at the nine-yard line, and once again, trips to the far side. Lone setback is young. Pagador's the motion man. On the blitz, he gets it to Young, cuts it up, and Young is going to be tackled at the 13-yard line, short of the first down. Shea Muirbrook, number 46. 24 tackles to lead BYU on the season came up to make the stop and that's all that he does is just make tackle after tackle after tackle. He has a great nose for the football and he made a great play there because that play was very well designed, very well set up by New Mexico, but a great pursuit angle by Muirbrook stopped it short of the first down. Kobe Mansell will be back to punt, standing on his own goal line. Mike Johnston at midfield to return for the Cougars of BYU. That's an end-over-end -end kick to the far side. It's going to bounce at the 48-yard line and go out of bounds on market at the 49. So BYU will have great field position as John Walsh tries to get something going. You look at his numbers right there, but last week, the four interceptions, the fumble in the loss to Colorado State University. A change, James Johnson, the third different left tackle they've tried this year. Hanshaw, Edwards, Pilgrim is probably their best all-around offensive lineman, and Herring, the big man at 6'8", and 325 pounds, the right tackle. Jamal Willis is the deep back. On first and ten from the full nine, and Walsh will throw immediately right down the middle. Blake Irwin comes up to make the hit. Chad Lewis, the sophomore from Orem, Utah, with his ninth reception of the year. As we take a look at the backs and receivers, Willis is a terrific player at 6'3", 225. They want to get the ball in his hands. Hey, Mule is a solid fullback. Lewis, the tight end. Johnston and Nowatsky, the wide receivers. Bryce Doman, the veteran with some knee problems, not starting today, and questionable whether he'll play or not. Second and four, as Walsh will go back in the shotgun at midfield. New Mexico showing the blitz, and Willis, the ball carrier, breaks a couple of tackles, takes on another man, and gets it down to the 30-yard line. Terrence Sharper finally made the tackle. Well, Brigham Young has not shown much of a running game out of the shotgun formation. They said they wanted to try a few different things. That was a little sweep play out of the shotgun, 
And if New Mexico's had a problem, it's been stopping a good running back. 14 yards in the pickup. Staff, Lisker, and Wingate up front. Coverly, Johnson, Irwin, and Thomas, the backers. Celestine, Sharper, Coit, and Butler, the secondary, on first and 10. And the pitch comes to Willis on the near side. Inside the 30 to the 28-yard line as the big man leans forward. Art Celestine came up from his cornerback spot along with Dan Coverly, the linebacker, to make the tackle. And this is a defense, Todd, that has, you know, really been decimated by some injuries. And they've got so many young kids playing, you just don't know what's going to happen. New Mexico scoring a lot of points on offense, but they're giving up 38, 102nd in the nation. Yeah, a lot of young guys, and they have not tackled very well in the, in the first three ball games, giving up 5.9 yards per carry in the rushing game. That's not good defensive football. Second and seven, 28-yard line. Split backs for Walsh as he looks near side. Receiver wide open. Milotsky had nobody within 10 yards of him as the ball was stripped, but he's out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Terrence Sharper. And how did Milotsky get open like that? Well, everybody was sucked inside. One of the receivers in the slot came to the inside, the tight end. A lot of the defense went that way, and Nowatsky, very smart, just kind of finds the open hole out there and sits there. Brigham Young will pick you apart if the quarterback has time to throw. They know how to spread the field both vertically and horizontally on you. That's the 13th game in a row for Nowatsky with at least one catch. First and 10, 18-yard line as Nowatsky comes out of the game. Walsh will give it to Willis. Hole on the left side. Willis down to the 10-yard line. And once again, it was Sharper, the junior from Dallas, Texas, with 31 tackles so far in the season. And a lot of those defensive backs making a lot of tackles for New Mexico. Well, Brigham Young going with the counter trap. Power football. Pull one lineman. He kicks out on the linebacker. The other one leads up through. And there you saw one missed tackle right at the line of scrimmage. And that means 10 more yards for Willis. But good job by the two linemen pulling out in front of that play for BYU. Now, Willis will check out of the game on second and two. Hey, Mooley, the lone setback. He'll get the football off the left side, and he is inside the five to the four-yard line. Right now, the left side of the BYU offensive line, where they made the change this week to James Johnson, the six-foot-six, 280-pound six, sophomore from Provo, Utah, is where they've been running and running successfully. Yeah, BYU has really run the football. Actually, probably run it better than they've thrown it here in the first three ball games. Their offensive lineman has done a better job in run blocking than they have in pass blocking. You mentioned at the top of the show the 15 sacks. Unusually high number for Brigham Young. First and goal, five-yard line. A Mooley the lone setback. He's got it again. And he is it. Yes, they finally make the call. Touchdown, BYU. I want to tell you what, Todd, these officials are a, real, a little reluctant this year to put their arms up too quickly. Well, they've got a great angle of it looking in right from the side. Again, great blocking on the left side. James Johnson, Hanshaw, the left guard, they get a great push, and you can see Himuli keeps a nice low center of gravity running to the goal line. Watch the push by the left side. They get onto the bodies of the linebackers, and then Himuli does a nice job just staying low and keeping his legs driving into the end zone. Lauder, the left-footed kicker. And that will be his 30th consecutive point after. And with 10.46 to go first quarter, the Cougars of BYU have jumped out on top of New Mexico, 7 to nothing. On the 60,000 fans on hand today, excited about the Cougars scoring on their first possession as Lauder with a big kick that time out of the end zone, and New Mexico will take it first and 10 from the 20-yard line. That was... Uh, Emule's first rushing touchdown of the year as Jamal Willis had scored all the other rushing TDs for BYU, and they did it on the ground, 34 of the 50 yards uh, on the ground that time. New Mexico now with their backs against the wall. This is exactly what Dennis Franchoni did not want. In their opener against Texas Tech, they jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead before losing that game. TCU handled them rather easily. And then, of course, uh, SMU scoring with three seconds to go to beat them last week in Dallas. Run to the left side, and that was Abe Ghoston, the sophomore from Sacramento, the converted wide receiver who is back at running back. He's had some chronic back problems, and uh, 
quit the team, as a matter of fact, last spring because of those back problems, but is playing today. There's the BYU defense up front. Watch Brock and Hall on the outside. Muirbrook is a terrific linebacker in the middle. And Patrick Mitchell, their best cover man, number 30 at corner. Gain of six on that last play. Second and four. Case on the option will pitch it back. And once again, that's Abe Ghostin. Stan Ross will bring him down, and that's more than enough for the first down. And it really shows kind of the diversity of Stoney Case as a quarterback compared to some other quarterbacks in the country. The ability to throw the football and to run the option. And what the option does for you as an offense is it keeps a defense honest. It doesn't allow them to blitz all out because defending an option, you have to be very particular on your assignments. A team that runs the option can kind of limit what you can do defensively. First and 10, 34-yard line. Three wide receivers, lone setback for New Mexico. Is ghosted on the play action. Case looking downfield and underthrown and picked off. Patrick Mitchell is brought down at the 32-yard line. And for Stoney Case, his sixth interception of the year. And Todd Armstrong, that there is a question about Stoney Case, that is it. And that man was open. He just couldn't get the ball there. I don't know that this was a case of not having a strong enough arm as it was. He just tried to throw the perfect pass. Watch him just take a little too much off this. He kind of tries to loft one down in there, and you really want to throw that away from the defender. Throw it and let your guy run to the football. There was no deep safety in the middle. It was a nice job by Patrick Mitchell, number 30, to cut in front of it, but that's a ball that has to be thrown away from the defense and let your guy run to the ball. Now Mitchell's brother, Brian, played here then with the Atlanta Falcons. He's a terrific athlete, and they're solid man in in the secondary for BYU as the pitch goes back to Willis. Big hole on the right side. Willis has got nine and nearly ten as he's gang tackled at the 42-yard line. Billy Austin, the first man up to meet him, number 16, a redshirt freshman from Houston, Texas. As you take a look at Jamal Willis, the senior from Las Vegas, Nevada, 6'3", 220 pounds. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I believe he'll play on Sunday before it's all over with. He, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, not, not that power runner inside, but uh, he always makes things happen with the football. There's a look at Willis right there. They want to get the ball in his hands at least 30 times today. On second and two, big hole on the right side. Breaks the tackle across midfield. Willis down inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Billy Austin makes the tackle and a penalty marker down on the far side of the field. Well, again, the problem that New Mexico has had in stopping the run is that they haven't been able to get off of blocks. Their linebackers, both inside and outside linebackers, have not been able to get off blocks, slow to the play, and make good tackles. The tight end got a great block on the right side that time for BYU and, and a good hole on the, on the right side all that Willis needed. A, a big hole on the right side, <laughs> and it might have been because of that holding call on the right side, so that'll nullify that fine run by uh, Jamal Willis. You know, Willis injured his ankle last year against New Mexico in the opener, didn't get to play very much, but two years before, over 100 yards, there's the hole right down the, the field receiver. by the wide receiver. Yeah, Nowatsky. Yeah, holding. you know, and you don't get upset Offense. with a wide receiver. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. The yardage will still give BYU a first down. You want your wide receivers to be aggressive downfield and try to block for the running back, so you can't really get upset for them. Just got to keep those hands on the inside. Really, all you need to do as a wide receiver, get in somebody's way. Just kind of get there and distract them. That's the New Mexico D. Last in the WAC, 102nd in the nation in scoring defense. And what a change from a year ago, a 93 first in scoring D, first in passing D, second in total defense in the Western Athletic Conference. On first and 10, the ball is thrown behind the intended receiver. Man down there was 95, Itule Mili, the backup tight end, and see Notre Dame has jumped out on top of Purdue in the second quarter. Trent Coit was back there on the coverage for New Mexico. New Mexico has a veteran secondary, a Butler, number nine, the only returning starter, but Sharper's a junior, and Coit's a senior, and Celestine is a junior, but they're very young in their front seven. And if that has been the, if there's been any strength to their defense, the coaches have said the defensive backs have kind of been the bright spot in this defense. They would rather have BYU throw the football. On second down, Willis tries the right side, and absolutely nothing there as Damon Burris 
Number 75, a senior from Tab, Virginia, who has been suffering from back spasms. Todd, there was a real question whether he had played today, came up with the big play. Well, watch the quick move right on the right of your screen. He's going to split through the double team, and he's got the size, 317 pounds. You cannot play it any better as a defensive lineman than Burris did there. Split the double team right along the line of scrimmage and made the tackle. I wonder what the food bill is at the training table in New Mexico. You know where the beef is. Third and ten. 44-yard line. As Walsh moves back into the shotgun. High snap. He pulls it down. And is able to throw it near side. And the catch is made. It's going to be very close to the first down. Nowatsky made the reception. Art Celestine was there on the coverage. And it appears as though it's going to be about a yard short. Single coverage out here. Nowatsky going against Celestine. Now, normally you would think Nowatsky would know what he needs for the first down. He's going to come back to the football and a good break on the ball by Celestine. He is right on the spot to make the sure tackle. And I think a pretty good call by the officials making it fourth and short. And they've been given a, a good New Mexico spot because uh, from here it looks like it's closer to two yards and one yard. And BYU is going to go for it. They're five of seven on fourth downs this year. So let's call it fourth and a long one. All out blitz look by New Mexico. Willis the ball carrier. Penalty marker is down. And he should have enough for the first down if the penalty is against New Mexico. Snap. False start on the offense. Five yards, still fourth down. Okay, so now that brings up a fourth and six. You know what happened there? John Walsh tried to go on a quick count. He was trying to get the team up and go on a quick count. And there was illegal motion. You could see the left tackle kind of mudged right there. That's the new guy in there, James Johnson, number 59. Took off a little bit early. John Walsh was trying to get his team up and go on a quick count and catch the defense in a movement. It backfired. Allen Boardman to punt. That's Eric Young, number four to receive it at the 10-yard line. Boardman there, number eight. Third in the whack, averaging nearly 42 yards a punt from his 33-yard line. Beautiful spiral. Drives Young back to the six. I'll tell you, nothing but blue shirts back there. Inside the 10-yard line at the eight, Waylon Hickman was the first man down on the coverage. 46 yards in the punt and just three on the return. Now let me get this straight. You're telling me this guy's going to kick the ball? Dean Blevins with you here in Provo, Utah. New Mexico with bad field position early in the game. Trailing Lavelle Edwards and the Cougars 7-0, 16 whack titles at BYU. As the Lobos will take it, first and 10, nine yard line. Stony Case checking off at the line of scrimmage and they'll run it off tackle. That's Ghostin with some room. Good job by Abe Ghostin as he gets to the 25 yard line and that'll be a first down for New Mexico. Jamie Cook and John Pollock make the tackle and he's having very little trouble switching Todd from wide receiver to running back 16 yards on that pickup no he looks really good back there very comfortable and you know what New Mexico likes to do with their formations they try to really spread the defense they have wide splits with their offensive linemen and open up some nice running creases and Ghostin knows how to hit the hole he showed it right there Manly Woods comes split to the near side two receivers at the top of the screen first and 10 25 yard line Ghostin has it again, trying the left side. He gets little or nothing that time. Good job there by the BYU front. John Ross and Travis Hall. It's going to be a long day for the uh, Cougars of uh, the University of Houston. The other Cougars playing today. Keep you updated on all the uh, college scores. Texas Tech, who defeated uh, New Mexico in the opening week of the season with a lead there today. Second down and 10 from the 25. Case, fourth in the nation in total offense. New Mexico is a team ninth in the nation. BYU is sixth. So two of the top offensive teams in the country. As Case with time looks downfield, has a receiver open. Catch made by Perlman at the 34-yard line. John Pollock was back there on the coverage, and the senior, former walk-on from Albuquerque, got behind the defense and made a terrific catch. 
And the difference between this throw and the one that was intercepted, it was about the same distance of a throw, but this time he went ahead and let it go. He didn't try to aim it, try to throw the perfect throw, went ahead and threw it. Look how he lets his receiver run to the football, throw it away from the defense, let the defender or let the receiver run to the ball. He threw that about 45 yards that time. He threw it well, too. This guy doesn't have many weaknesses. If he does, maybe his arm strength, we mentioned it a few moments ago, but he seems to come up in the games and plays at a different level. And first and ten, that's Ghoston again as he gets down to the 30. Muirbrook, one of the players there for BYU, and Randy Brock, the other one there to make the tackle. One of the things uh, Coach Dennis Franchoni wanted to accomplish with the offense today in Stony Case was to try to keep the defense off the field. Give these young kids, when they did make a stop, give them a chance to rest. Right. It's going to be warm here today, temperature in the 80s, and uh, get a little drive going. Make something happen that way. Yeah, sometimes the best defense against BYU is to keep their offense on the bench, and and New Mexico has the ability to put some long drives together. They have a nice mix between their run and passing game. On a second and six, Ghoston in motion. Four wide receivers, now five. This is a quarterback draw. Chase will run it inside the 30 to the 29, and not much there, just a couple of yards. Corey Cook was the man who ran him out of bounds, number 17, as you take a look at Stoney Case, the senior from Odessa, Texas. He's racked up some impressive numbers, and I think, Todd, you mentioned it this morning, he's improved every year. Yeah, he really has. He's always thrown more touchdowns and more interceptions. You can see he's the all-time leader in touchdown passes and touchdown rushes by a quarterback, and uh, he's a guy, he's a winner. I mean, he was 16-0 as a senior in high school at Odessa Permian. They won the state championship. He knows how to win football games, and that's the kind of guy you like behind center. Third and five. Trips to the near side. And Case will roll that way. Trying to hit Perman. He overthrows him at the 22-yard line. The coverage was there. Jamie Cook has Perlman went as high as he could go at five foot eight and 156 pounds. There's not a lot of this young man who originally went to Kenyon College uh, up in Ohio, not necessarily a football powerhouse, and came back to New Mexico, his hometown Albuquerque, and walked on. And uh, it's a terrific story. As we've got a timeout on the field, New Mexico wants to take a timeout on a fourth down and five with 4.46 left to go. First quarter from Provo, BYU leads New Mexico 7-0. put the starters on the plane back to New Mexico. I guess old Coach Johnson there in New Mexico uh, wasn't real happy with his starters. <laughs> Didn't like to fly, but we've got a fourth and five, and New Mexico is going to go for it. Ball's at the 29-yard line. play at the line of scrimmage. Give Case a chance to look over the defense and then make the call. Is he going to run it? No, he's going to throw it. And they've got the first down. Ghoston, the receiver, still on his feet. And Ghoston is pushed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. John Pollock was the man over there to push him out. And what a heads-up play by Stoney Case. Outstanding play by Stoney Case. Just staying, knowing where the line of scrimmage was and waiting for the last moment of time to dump the ball off. Now watch. He reads the defense. He calls a play. Now this play is not good. Right there, his initial read, there's nobody open. He feels the pressure. Last minute, just perfect little flip out to his tailback. Gets the first down. I mean, he could have probably run for it, but he knew he had the sure first down with an easy throw to the sideline. Shelton and Ghoston. The setbacks behind Sonny Case. On first and 10 from the 16-yard line. That was Wesley, the man in motion over to the far side. Two tight ends in there this time. True option. And Buston through there, making the tackle. 97, Randy Brock. Six six, two hundred and fifty pound senior from Rexburg, Idaho, and the strength of the Cougars' defense is on the outside with Travis Hall and Randy Brock. Nice penetration. The way to stop the option, get penetration by the guys that aren't being optioned. He was a guy that was supposed to be blocked by the tight end, was able to slip through the block, get penetration. Stony Case really had nowhere to go with the football. And a loss of four on that play brings up a second down and fourteen. Ball back at the twenty yard line. 
Griffin is in a tight end, so two tight ends for the Lobos. Case fires it near side. That's Wesley, Zach Wesley, inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Jamie Cook, 27. The first player there to meet him as you look at uh, Zach Wesley. 15 receptions, 139 yards this year. And Jamie Cook, all the way from uh, Annapolis, Maryland, playing out here at BYU. You know, the coaches mentioned that the, the strength of Stoney Case is his decision-making. Right there was a great example of it. It was second down and more than 10. Instead of going for the whole bundle, trying to get the touchdown or even the first down on one play, he makes the nice throw against the zone, gets about eight of it back. Now it's third down and four, a workable situation. Case now checking off the line of scrimmage. Tenth play of this drive. Going in the end zone. Touchdown! Beautiful throw to Manly Woods. Stony Case, the touchdown pass to Manly Woods, nine yards. And the Lobos of New Mexico with a beautiful drive to bring him back into this game. I'll tell you what, folks, this is a difficult, difficult throw. Rolling to his left, a right-handed quarterback on the move, and he puts it right where it has to be, to the outside of the receiver. Either his man catches it or nobody catches it. That is a perfect throw, rolling to the left. And the point after attempt off the upright by Nathan Vale. And no good. So Vale, who last year narrowly missed a field goal in Albuquerque, which could have given them a tie, misses the extra point. Watch up at the top left of your screen now. That's going to be Manly Woods. He's going to run a little out route. Now watch the throw. Moving to his left, he gets his shoulder square, and Manly Woods goes right to that cone, right to the corner of the end zone, that orange cone. He plants his feet inbounds. That's great work by the quarterback wide receiver. And there's Vale. You know, we were talking to a couple of people from New Mexico who still to this day insisted that field goal last year in Albuquerque was good. And they didn't get the call, which would have given them a 34 tie. Of course, the you know, Lobos have been involved in so many close games the last couple of years. And uh, nonetheless, a good drive, a good positive drive for the Lobos of New Mexico. And BYU now with a one-point lead of 7-6. to six. You know, Mitchell was right there, could have got his hand on that, but that just showed you the power. You know, sometimes, Todd, you know, as a former quarterback, there, there are guys that can throw it a long way downfield, and there's guys that on that 15 to 20 yard range, they can't put that little pop on the ball and get it in. He showed you great arm strength right there. Great zip on the ball, and, and really the, the most remarkable thing about it was going to his left, getting those shoulders square, and throwing it right on target. Fail to kick it off, and it is a low line drive kick that's going to bounce into the end zone. And BYU will have it at the 20. Next Saturday on ABC's College Football, Colorado meets Texas, and UCLA will head up to Seattle. Todd and I will be there for that game against the Washington Huskies, plus other regional coverage. Check your local listings for the game in your area call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. That's next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, right here on ABC's College Football. If you got nine bucks, Todd, you can call up the cable guy and get the game you want. Ten plays, 91 yards, time of possession, 3.51. Good job by the Lobos, as Walsh will take it over, first and ten from the 20, just over three minutes to go, wide open in the middle of the tight end. Nobody around Mealy that time, and a pickup of 11. And you can see the philosophy of BYU coming out in this first quarter. A lot of quick throws for quarterback John Walsh. You know, he had some problems with getting some happy feet in the game last week against Colorado State. Started feeling the pressure instead of, you know, looking downfield and feeling the rush. He started looking for the rush. He was getting hit a couple times. So far in this ballgame, a lot of quick throws. He's not holding on to the football very long, and he's getting in a pretty decent rhythm. BYU has won 13 straight against New Mexico, dating back to 1980 as Willis tries the left side. Look at him stay on his feet and drive forward to the 38-yard line. John Wingate was over there to make the tackle. And New Mexico has not won here in Provo since 1971. As you take a look at Wingate, a freshman redshirt for Castroville, Texas. Wingate's a freshman. Staff number 94 is a freshman. Borchers 98's a freshman. Lux Singer 52's a freshman. You know, Wingate played his first game last week, had 17 tackles and three sacks. I mean, he had a great opening collegiate game. Second down and six, and Willis fumbles the football, and they're going to say, no, he was down at the 35-yard line. 
Good pursuit there by the New Mexico defense. Blake Irwin, number 39, a freshman redshirt out of Boulder, Colorado, and the nephew of golfer Hale Irwin was right there to make the tackle. A good job by the Lobo defense that time. You know, and, and because they're playing so many young kids, Todd, they'll come together eventually. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but you can see it here in the ensuing drives. I mean, BYU got off to a real good start, and the defense has come on pretty tough here on a third and eighth from the 35, and out of the shotgun, Walsh with time to throw, and the pass is completed across midfield to the 48 yard line. Nowatsky makes the catch, and Coit and Celestine were right there on the coverage. Well, we talked about the arm strength of Stony Case. Watch the arm on this guy. Now watch him set in the pocket, good poise in the pocket, and throws a rope on the in route. That's about an 18-yard in route, and he throws it with very little air under it, right on target to Nowatsky. Nowatsky had eight catches, 126 yards last week in the loss to Colorado State. Career day, but really couldn't enjoy it because of the loss. 17 yards on that pickup. First and 10, 48-yard line as Walsh got his back squared away. Throws a quick out right there to McGuire. And McGuire is brought down at the 40-yard line. Coit, one of the men, along with Celestine. And, you know, that's a real good pass. If the uh, the corners are laying off you, good strong arm, get the ball there in a hurry, nice easy eight-yard pickup. Yeah, and, it, and it's just a, as good as a good running mm -hmm. play on first down. You get, you know, it's, it's a very short throw. It gets there in a very short amount of time. And if the guy breaks one tackle, it can be a 15 or 20-yard play. If he gets tackled on the spot, as you say, an eight- or nine-yard gain and brings up second and two, which is a, a position that every offense likes to be in. Less than 30 seconds to go first quarter. Once again, New Mexico showing the blitz, and they'll give it to Willis off the right side. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage, and just with his power and his speed is able to lean forward and get the first down. Luxinger, 52, the freshman from Houston, and Blake Irwin, the redshirt freshman, uh, make the tackle, but Willis showing you a good effort right there. I want to remind you, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a genuine Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team, and for the 24th year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. It's the genuine Chevrolet Player of the Game. We're going to bring in the chains and see if Willis did indeed get that first down. Looked like he had extended enough to get it. And he did. Let's check in with Dean Blevins. Dean? Roger, that was a big drive a moment ago by New Mexico in scoring the touchdown. I just spoke with quarterback Stoney Case, and he said, I asked him if, they were, if BYU was presenting anything he was not expecting. He said, he said no, maybe a little more man-to-man, -man, but they're prepared for it. Defensively, we asked about number 75. You, you were talking about Damon Burris, who has back spasms. And we said, is he okay? And the, the trainer said, well, did you see the play he just made? Uh, he's on the sideline now, but he's okay, and he will play a lot today. Okay, Dean, thanks. As we have completed the first quarter of play from Provo, Utah, BYU leads New Mexico by a point, 7-6. to six. That's a start the second quarter from Provo, Utah. Cougars have it first and 10, 38-yard line. Walsh checking off at the line of scrimmage. He'll jump back into the shotgun. Anytime he feels inside blitz, he has the ability to get in the shotgun. Now he's being forced up the middle. They don't necessarily like him to run with the football, but he runs right to the marker, and he's got a first down. At the 28-yard line, Blake Irwin was the man giving him pressure. One of the concerns, Todd, with the BYU coaching staff was for Walsh to stay in the pocket, give it a little bit more time, trust his blockers a little bit more. But when you've been sacked 15 times, that's hard to do. Yeah, you can get a little bit gun-shy. That time, he stayed in the pocket as long as he could. Give credit to New Mexico. Good coverage downfield. And Walsh did what a good quarterback has to do. He sees the opening to his to his right. He sees a, a you know, green field flash before him. He knows where the first down is. He goes and gets the first down. That's the most critical thing that he can do. This is the WAC season opener for New Mexico. For BYU, their fourth consecutive WAC game to start the season. They've got a 2-1 record, a Lobos 0-3. But they can really turn things around here today as the handoff goes inside leaning across the 25-yard line down to the 23-yard line. Atuaya. Mark Atuaya as we take a look at the statistics from the first quarter. And uh, pretty good balance there, Ty. Yeah, pretty good. New Mexico did a nice job towards the end of the quarter, kind of getting back in and evening up the numbers. They started that first quarter in such poor field position. They had the long field to work with most of that quarter, but one nice drive on their scoring drive. Second and five. Ball at the 23-yard line. Corner blitz. 
First man through gets the football and not going anywhere. A Mooley is able to lean forward and pick up about a yard as Blake Irwin and Roston Thomas, number 34, from the linebacker spots came up to make the stop. Well, Chad Lewis, most tight ends at Brigham Young are more known as pass receivers than they are blockers. You can see he's going to try to block on Roston Thomas. Doesn't get too much of a piece of him, and Thomas is able to fall off, but he's not the one that makes the sure tackle. Good pursuit from the inside by the Lobo defense. Make it third down and three from the 21. Willis is the lone setback. And Walsh checking off at the line of scrimmage. Looking down there, wide opens his tight end. Touchdown, BYU. Walsh to Chad Lewis. Boy, Walsh saw something there at the line of scrimmage, Todd. Well, they went with a two tight end set. BYU doesn't use it too much. That balances out the defense and a miscommunication by the Lobo defense. Nobody is going to pick up the tight end on the weak side. You can see they're running out of there. No defender. That's the top receiving tight end for Brigham Young. Everybody went to the other tight end. That was Mealy, and they left Lewis wide open. Nice read by John Walsh. And for Walsh. His seventh touchdown pass of the year, Lewis's first touchdown reception. As Louder attempts the point after, and it's good. And with 13.34 to go, first half from Provo, Utah, BYU has taken a 14-6 lead over New Mexico. I want you to look at the top left part of your screen now. Art Celestine, the quarterback on the outside, is going to come on a blitz, and the linebacker right over the tight end, Coverly, is going to run out. Instead of staying on the tight end, he's going to run out under the wide receiver. That leaves no coverage on the tight end, Lewis. Obviously, a miscommunication between Art Celestine, the corner, and the linebacker, Coverly. And the kickoff by BYU. Terrence Sharper from the five-yard line. Sharper still on his feet, and he finally falls down at the 38-yard line. David Louder, the uh, kicker, was the man who came down there and got in his way, 33 yards on the return. And by the way, BYU now, their 239th straight game with points on the board is an ongoing and ongoing and ongoing NCAA record. And Brett Blyle, the defensive coordinator, his, his worst fears are coming true right now. He was a little bit concerned in watching the films of, of John Walsh. He said, you know, the thing that scares me is he has not appeared to be in sync yet this year. So far today, 7 of 8, 83 yards and a touchdown. He seems to be getting his confidence back. Good news for the Lobos, their best field position of the day. Four wide receivers, and they give it to Shelton, the lone back up the middle, and Shelton will get it to the 44-yard line. Chris Shelton, a redshirt freshman from Palestine, Texas, just uh, 13 carries coming into this game. Well, here's a tough kid, Muirbrook. Yeah, Brigham Young has really tried to upgrade their defense, and it starts with this guy in the middle. Watch him. Just has a nose for the football. He just sits there. He stays in that great linebacker position with his knees bent and his butt down and moves laterally very well and knows how to make tackles. Six foot, about 225. Reminds me of a guy named Eric Anderson that played at Michigan a few years ago on the bootleg case is he going to turn it up yes he's got the first down he's got more he's caught from behind all the way down to the 35 yard line stony case finally tracked down by travis hall number 56 and Corey Cook, number 17. Well, they lost contain on the outside, partly due to the good fake by Case. You see, he never showed the ball to the defense. Then he was able to get outside of Randy Brock. And again, another good decision. Now, Case could have thrown the football, but he knew right then he could gain more yards by running it than throwing it out in the flat to his back. 20 yards on the pickup for Stoney Case, who now has over 750 net career rushing yards on the option he will pitch it back to Ghostin who cuts it up Ghostin inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line good job right there by Abe Ghostin and we'd like to remind you Monday ABC's NFL Monday Night Football features two superstar quarterbacks John Elway and Jim Kelly it's live at 9 Eastern 6 Pacific on ABC's Monday Night Football Kelly's still a superstar, but Elway's 0-3, Todd. Well, I mean, Denver's <laughs> having some problems right now. They went out and got a bunch of guys to, to help their offense, but so far, their real struggle is on defense. They can't stop anybody right now. Second down and two, Eric Young has replaced Ghoston in the backfield. On the delay, that's Young who's got it. He cuts it to the outside. Young now with room. Young inside the five, and a penalty marker is down at the 10-yard line as Eric Young got it inside the five. 
Zach Wesley was out there leading the way with the block, and we'll have to see what the call is as Young, who just checked back into the football game, as Ghoston appeared to be shaken up on the previous play, and we're going to get a clip against New Mexico. You know what? That was a very, very late call. That flag came in awful late. Wesley, it did look like he maybe got the block in behind, but the flag was very late in coming out. Watch again. Good blocking at the point of attack, and then a nice cut to the outside. Now, in the top of the right-hand part of your screen, there was the block. Wesley. Illegal block in the back above the waist. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Yardage still good enough for a first down. You know, Todd, it's a fine, thin line when you're trying to block somebody, and then that defensive man turns his back. Yeah, take a look at the top right part of your screen. Now, Wesley going to try to get, you got to get your helmet in yeah, front he of him. Didn't. It's a good call. The helmet yeah. was in the back of the defender, and that's unfortunate. First really, all he has to do, and again, a receiver, all he has to do out there for his running back is just kind of shadow a guy. Just try to stay between him and the ball carrier. You don't really even have to get a devastating block. If you can stay in between them, let the back just cut off of you either way. That moves it back to the 21. Stony Case checking off at the line of scrimmage. Ghoston is checked back in there. Brigham Young showing blitz. Ghoston picked up the blitz. Case with a lot of time. Now he finally gets rid of it. He's hit and throws it out of the end zone. Case was really busted by Shea Muirbrook that time. But he made the right call. The back picked up the blitz, and he had time to get rid of it. Yeah, they picked up the blitz, and what they did was Muirbrook was not on a blitz. But as soon as he saw the quarterback leave the pocket, he had no coverage responsibility, so he made a run right for the quarterback. Try to get in there, get him hit. Don't let him get everything on the football. That's a nice job by the linebacker, kind of flowing with the play. And when he saw him out, break and contain, make a run for him and try to disrupt the pass. Second down and 10, as the Lobos will send trips to the near side. Let's look again. Case checks off, comes back into the shotgun, and now he wants a timeout. So Stony Case saw something he didn't like, and with 11:43 to go, first half, and New Mexico on the move. The Lobos take the timeout. Sets up, got his receiver Perlman at the 15-yard line where he's tackled out of bounds there by Jamie Cook, number 27. So he found Perlman. They're going to be about four yards short of the first down. Brigham Young in a nickel defense that time, and they, they went to a zone defense. Good protection on the sprint out. Now watch. They're going to roll him out of the pocket. They get a nice cut on the end of the line. That was the key block. His back got a nice cut, got the arms down, had to settle for the underneath throw, but still a good decision by Case. On third down and four, they split Sloan, the tight end, out to the near side. And movement up front, it looked like the big man, Calvin Allen, the six foot seven, 365-pound junior. You see him right there, part of that all-you-can-eat offensive line. Nicknamed uh, Eclipse. Eclipse. So he was, is a big man. Was moving backwards and blocking the sun for a moment. I'll tell you, this offensive line, it's a warm day. The uh, penalty third against down. New Mexico is, uh, is held up rather well. These are, these are kids that... Uh, uh, Dennis Franchoni says they're strong, they work in the weight room, and uh, he says they're only going to get better. And he says they've got pretty good quickness, over 5 to 10 yards, which is all you want from those big offensive and, linemen. And two years ago, when he first went to New Mexico, he said the offensive line averaged only 255 pounds. It was by design they went out and recruited some big fellas. Third and nine from the 20. All right, blitz on the near side, shovel pass inside. BYU was all over it. John Ross, number 51, the six foot, 285 pounder who's got tree trunks for legs, was right there to stuff that play. And that'll bring up a field goal situation for Nathan Vale, who's connected on all three so far this year. They'll set it down, uh, let's call it the 32, make it a 42 yard attempt. And it's blocked. Stoney Case, the holder, couldn't get a handle on it. Vail falls on it at the 40. So the kicking game, which Dean Blevins told us at the top that Coach Franchoni really emphasized today, has not worked out very well so far. Yeah, and this appeared to be a very low trajectory kick. It was blocked from the middle of the defense. They got a pretty good push on the inside, but I really think it was a result of a low kick. Watch, the pressure's going to come right up the middle. Good push right over the center, oh, yeah. and that was the leaper in the back of the line, but that ball never really got any lift on it. 
Watch the leaper in the back of the line. They get the push up front, then he just kind of times his jump. That's the tight end. Chad Lewis. Chad Lewis, yeah. number 96. Good job jumping. First and 10, BYU. Big hole, cross midfield to the 48-yard line. Beautiful job of running and blocking that time. Hey, Mooley had the big hole, took advantage of it. Coverly 23 and Coy 41 on the tackle. 12 yards on the pickup. And this is what really hurts New Mexico. They've got a drive going. They get it inside the yep. five. The penalty brings them back. The field goal is blocked. They get nothing out of it. You know, back to that block field. The head coach of Colorado State has, has brought the Miami defensive philosophy to Fort Collins. And uh, uh, BYU, I think, has really made an emphasis on defense. Third and ten from the 48, and they're going to throw the flag. No, he's not going to throw it. Well, I'll tell you what, that was interesting. That was interesting. McGuire was the intended receiver. Butler was back on the coverage. He went to his back pocket, and then he threw his arm up like he was going to throw it. Yeah, let's watch the end of the play. McGuire, the ball kind of hangs up in the air. Now, Butler right there, the left hand on the back Both hands. was enough to call the interference. I mean, as he went for the ball, that was okay. But long before the ball got there, the left hand was clearly on the back of the receiver. Probably should have been an interference call. Oh, and he got some booze. Kaipo McGuire from Pearl City, Hawaii. And that'll bring up a punting situation. Alan Boardman in and uh, Terrence Sharper back to receive. There's Boardman, number eight. That's a huge break. Yeah, it sure is. Call. I mean, to, just to keep this game within range right now in the first half. From the 37-yard line. That's a nice high kick. And uh, Sharper's going to let it go. And look at this thing. So once again, the Lobos are going to start with their backs against the wall. Spencer Reed was a man down there to down the football. 8.46 to go. First half from Provo. You're telling me this guy's going to... 49ers. Well, third possession for New Mexico starting inside their own 10-yard line. First and 10 from the 5 for Stoney Case and the Lobos. And trying the left side and getting nothing there at all. Good defensive job by BYU as Abe Ghoston was brought down. And let's go to Dean Blevins. Dean? <laughs> All right, we've got a problem with Dean's microphone. We'll get back to him as soon as we can. A loss of one on that last play. It brings up a second down and 11. And out of the shotgun. Case rolling right, pressure from the backside, and that ball could have been intercepted. It would have been out of bounds. And let's go back down to Dean. Guys, as I was saying, after that field goal was blocked a moment ago, I heard offensive coordinator Dennis Darnell talking to his offensive line. He said, guys, doing a great job on run blocking, right, right, on right, pass right. protection, but we've got to cover that simple twist on the extra point and field goal block. This score should be 14 to 10. Back to you. Okay, Dean, thanks. There was a penalty marker down on that last play, and it's going to be stepped off against BYU. Yeah, it was going to be a roughing the passer and a very unfortunate roughing call the for BYU. Against the defense, 15 well, yards, first down. They got him pinned back. He's throwing it out of his end zone, kind of in desperation. Watch at the top. Ufali. At the very end of this play, Ufali, 98. Just well, clear. Late. He just hit him late. There was no reason for him to make the contact. Mike Ufali, a junior. Wow. With a late hit, and it cost him, and it might add dearly, because it gets New Mexico out of the hole, and a first down up to the 20-yard line. First and 10. 8-14 left to go in the first half. The option by Case, he cuts it up. He's got a first down. He's still going, and Case to the 40-yard line. Beautiful job by Stoney Case. Dermell Reed finally made the tackle. Oh, what a great block by the fullback. Number 38, Chris Shelton, is going to get the key block as they run the option. Watch the fullback. He's going to get a block on the end right there on the linebacker. He's going to cut, and Case is going to cut right inside the block of his fullback. Nice block downfield by the wide receiver, Pagador, number 80, and a nice job running the option by Stoney Case. They run the option with just enough effectiveness that it really kind of keeps the defense on their heels. I guarantee you, Todd, he's not going to run the option this time. He came limping back to the huddle after that play. First and 10 from the 40, out of the shotgun, as Pagador goes in motion to the far side. The blitz, and they'll send it to Manley, trying to bring it inside. Manly Woods, number 83, 
made the catch and uh, got it right back to the line of scrimmage where Corey Cook was all over him. Nice job by BYU's defense, defensive coordinator Ken Schmidt. That's a play that New Mexico had shown. It's kind of the fake double screen. They want to throw the middle screen to the wide receiver. BYU had that one sniffed out exactly. I mean, they knew exactly when that play was coming. Very well defense. They'll give him a yard on that one. Second down and nine at the 41. They'll bring Griffin the tight end out to the near side. Four wide receivers, and now that's Shelton in motion. So Case all by himself is going to run it this time and can't get away from the BYU defense. Greg Pitts, the senior from Provo, was there to make the stop. Tonight, Paul Hogan stars in Crocodile Dundee Deuce on the ABC Family movie at 8, 7 central time. Then the season premiere of The Commish reveals an incredible turn in Tony's life. It's all tonight here on ABC. It's a critical third down play, I think, for New Mexico. Third down and five. They really are fortunate to be down only eight points with the field position they've had in this first half. If they can keep the chains moving here, put some points on the board before halftime, big confidence boost. Third and five as Ghoston's got it. He's got the first down across midfield to the 48-yard line. Well-designed play by the Lobos of New Mexico as Jamie Cook, one of the players, and Corey Cook, number 17, came up to make the stop on folks. Abe Ghoston, who came into this game having not carried the football this year. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he looks good running the football, and Gavin Perlman, the little wide receiver, smallest guy on the team, 5'8", 157 pounds, got a great block on the outside on the DB. That was the block that got the first down. First and 10. 48-yard line, Ghoston, eight carries, 49 yards. Stoney Case checking off at the line of scrimmage, under six minutes to go in the half. Pretty good coverage. He's going to send it up top, and the outstretched arms of Zach Wesley cannot bring the football in. Patrick Mitchell was back there on the coverage. I don't know. You know, these people were telling us he couldn't throw it downfield, and I'm looking right there, and that's just about a 50-yard pass that seemed to be in... Pretty good flight, didn't it? Yeah, pretty good throw. And, and it looked like Wesley maybe was a little confused with the audible because it didn't seem to me like he was running full speed down the sideline. I think he may have had a little confusion. Stony Case audible at the line of scrimmage, and it's a lot easier to audible when you're at home than it is away from home. The crowd noise is a little bit more difficult. Got to make sure that the inside receivers relay that audible out to the outside receivers if you're having trouble hearing. Now Case checking off again out of the shotgun on second and 10. This is a very subdued crowd here in Provo. He wanted to throw it, and he's got to run it out of bounds. He's going to lose a couple of yards as he comes out at midfield. Randy Brock was the uh, man applying the initial pressure, number 97. Brock got sort of uh, whipped from behind that time with a... Uh, a block that was away from the play. Well, I'll tell you what, Muirbrook was, was in fast pursuit. He did not make the tackle, but take a look in the middle of your screen. Watch 46. See if you can keep an eye on him through this whole play. He's just shadowing the quarterback, shadowing the quarterback all the way to the sideline. Now, he's not going to make the tackle, but he's going to go over on the sideline and take out half the bench and a Gatorade bottle <laughs> over on the sideline. He went flying into the equipment behind the bench. Now the crowd gets into it. Third down and 12 from midfield. Just the second time this year, Stony Case has been dropped, and Travis Hall and Randy Brock were in there. Hall has three sacks on the year, number 56, and Brock 97. But there's Hall, the senior from West Jordan, Utah. Yeah, Lavelle Edwards is really excited about his two defensive ends, Travis Hall and Randy Brock. He thinks they both have excellent quickness, good upfield rushers, and that time they just really collapsed the pocket from the outside. Stony Case had nowhere to go. Kobe Mansell standing at his 30 to punt it. Mike Johnson back deep. That's a high short kick. Johnson's going to come up and field it at the 27-yard line. Never called for the fair catch. Never got the hand up as uh, Terrence Sharper. Well, you, special teams guys dream about plays like that when the, uh, the, the guy the, forgets, the, to, put the guy forgets to put his hand up and he wants to catch it. And you can just go in there and try to separate the, the ball from him, his shoes from him, and Johnson's a little bit slow in getting up, and they've got a problem with wide receiver because Doman is out with a knee injury. Yeah, they really do. I mean, he, he never does make the fair no, catch, and the ball is short, and so you know that the defense is going to get there a little bit quicker. His knee was down. Maybe he thought he wasn't going to get hit because his knee was down, but really probably should have made the fair catch. He got to. That's an injury that they can ill afford to have because Bryce Doman 
who was who was a senior starting receiver. He's got the knee problem. He's not playing today, and and receiver has been a problem for them this year. They they've had trouble finding guys who can get open for John Walsh. And right there, you can see his right knee is down, but that's a that's a close call. And you can't blame uh, Sharper for making the hit there because well, you can't really see what was happening. Todd, so they just don't have the deep speed that they've had in years past. As a matter yeah. of fact, their longest completion has been to the running back, Jamal Willis, of 40 yards this year, so that's really hurt them. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. He really has got the first down. Every time he's touched the ball today, he's made some good things happen. So Hamuli with the first down and coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from all of today's action. That's coming up at halftime. We've got 4.53 left to go until half. You know, BYU doing an interesting thing in this first half. They're going to more two tight end formation. It balances out this defense. It's a little more of a run-oriented formation, but they've had a lot of success running the football out of this two tight end, one back formation. They're still in it right now. First and 10, 38-yard line. They've found the run. Hey, Mooley's got it again. I want to tell you, a good job there. Even though he got about five yards, there was a real good job by Dan Coverley, number 49, the senior from Minden, Nevada, transfer from Ricks College. Really stuffed the play to the outside and uh, made him come inside. You see uh, Colorado up on top of Michigan. They're just picking up where they left off last week against those Big Ten teams. And uh, Blackledge's alma mater with a, another thumping today. <laughs> Penn State to rolling along. They're scoring some points this year, boy. Second and three. So there's some movement on the inside right there. A first down is Atuaya. Number 22 got the inside handoff. A, a lot of movement right there by the offensive line as Sharper finally makes the tackle. Well, BYU doing a pretty nice job running out of the shotgun formation. There's Chad Lewis on the end of the line. Just going to kind of come in and get a piece, get in front of the defensive end there. Nice job, and, and really a good job by Roger Prince, the offensive coordinator of BYU, mixing up the running plays out of the shotgun. Everybody expects when John Walsh gets in that shotgun to throw the football, they've done a nice job running the football out of that set. We've got a New Mexico player down at the 47-yard uh, line. That's Terrence Sharper, who's uh, slow in getting up. Let's go down to Dean. Guys, Mike Johnston, a moment ago, number 84, BYU's wide receiver, went out. He was bruised on the quad. He's fine. He will return. Of course, that's significant because Bryce Doman is out. And we'll check this latest injury. Thanks, Dean. Well, we saw Tawaya carry the ball just a moment ago. Back in 91, before he went on his mission, he started against New Mexico and had a huge day. 121 yards, 101 yards rushing, seven receptions for 60 yards and a touchdown. And he's back and getting some significant playing time today. First and 10, 45-yard line. Less than four minutes to go, first half. BYU leads it 14 to 6, as Willis will take it. And he leans forward, he gets to the 40-yard line. So BYU, the pass-happy Cougars, very content to just run the football right now. Yeah, and they're doing a great job here in the first half. Five more yards on that carry, 121 yards rushing in the first half, only 83 yards passing. But now with second and five, and they've been running the ball very well, this is a perfect setup for a nice play action, maybe even a naked bootleg by the quarterback, John Walsh. Willis, 11 carries, 55 yards, second and five from the 40. Three wide receivers, and Walsh checks off now at the line of scrimmage as the uh, Lobos once again showing that blitz, but they really haven't come with it much, and when they have, they've been burned on several occasions, and that play does not work at all. Atuaya stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Dan Coverley, number 49, was the man in on the tackle. We've got a couple of sets of twins playing here today. The Ross brothers for BYU. And Rod and uh, Dan Coverland for yeah, New Mexico. Yeah, BYU very content to let the yeah, clock run down here in the first half. Just about two and a half minutes left in the first half. They'd like to put one more touchdown in before halftime, but not give New Mexico much time with the football when they have to kick it back to him. Third down and four. Walsh hasn't had much pressure today. He's been able to sit back and throw it. He's got a man wide open to the near side. Atuaya. And he is inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. He was wide open. Nobody was covering him. Well, Atuaya does a nice job. He's actually going to show like he's blocking on this pattern. Watch, he's going to show blocking and just kind of slip out. John Walsh is going to him all the way because he saw the defense all react to the inside receivers. 
Atawaya just slipped out. He was unaccounted for by the New Mexico defense, and that's one of the things Brigham Young will do. They're going to try to get four and five receivers out on just about every pattern and try to find where the holes are in that zone defense. 23 yards on the pickup, first and 10, 16-yard line. Walsh is going to swing it out to Atuaya again, and not much success on that one as he gets it back to the line of scrimmage. First guy to meet him was Dan Coverly. He's the uh, dean of the New Mexico D. He's 24 years of age from Minden, Nevada, and a transfer from Ricks College. 6'5 and 227, good size for a linebacker. Yeah, Coverly made a great play on that because he, first of all, before he made the tackle, he had to fight through the block of Evan Pilgrim, number 70, the right guard for Brigham Young, kind of went right through that block and was able to get in and trip up the ball carrier. So that was a, an excellent play out on the perimeter by Coverly. Second down and 10 from the 16. Nowatsky is in motion, and he stops. Looks from the outside, penalty marker down, and they got him. They finally got Walsh. Coming out from the outside was Rostin Thomas, number 34, and just was able to get a piece of his ankle and trip him up, but there is a penalty marker down. I think they're going to get Nowatsky for turning up field too yeah, soon. He, he was coming back in motion, and he started up field and tried to hesitate, but still the referee was on at the illegal motion call. Todd, does that happen often where a player's in motion? And illegal motion on the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. And he gets to where he's supposed to be too soon, and he doesn't have anywhere yeah. to go all of a yeah, sudden. I mean, it's yeah. hard to just kind of freeze there and yeah. not do anything, yeah. and that time Nowatsky got caught in the middle. So Walsh had been sacked 15 times in the first three games. This is the first sack today by New Mexico of John Walsh. And that brings up a third down and 13 from the 19-yard line. Walsh started to go back in the shotgun. Now he does after checking off at the line of scrimmage. Less than a minute to go. First half, he's looking downfield. He's got a receiver open. Touchdown! Kaipo McGuire. Nineteen yards on the touchdown pass from Walsh to McGuire. Well, Roger French said that he wanted to see his quarterback, John Walsh, stay in the pocket better today. Even in the, in the face of good pressure and a blitz, Rostin Thomas came on a blitz and John Walsh stayed right in there, took the shot right under the chin, but still was able to make the throw for the touchdown against man-to-man -to -man coverage. Nowatsky will hold it. Water to attempt the point after. And it's good. 54 seconds left to go. First half, BYU leads it 21-6. Take a look at the top left part of your screen. New Mexico's going to come with a blitz. This free safety, Trent Coit, they're going to pick one of them up. They're going to turn the other one loose, and Walsh does a great job just staying his ground. He knows he's going to get hit, but he also knows he's got man-to-man -man coverage with McGuire running to the post. He makes a perfect throw and then takes the hit. And I'll tell you, Roger, those hits don't hurt nearly as bad when you complete them for touchdowns. Absolutely. Second time today that uh, New Mexico has come with the blitz, and Walsh has burned them for the touchdown pass. Louder to kick it off. Manly Woods, Steve Pagador, back deep for the Lobos, who have just one timeout left with 54 seconds to go in the first half. And they'll start it from the 20. It's a pretty good defensive effort on a third and 13. Nine plays, 72 yards, four minutes and five seconds. And the touchdown pass from Walsh to McGuire. 21-6, BYU leads it. This looks like a, uh, a much different team than played here last week against Colorado State University. Yeah. Fans were getting pretty antsy after that loss to CSU. Well, one of the real strengths of this team has always been execution, and they have not executed very well in the first three ball games. but today, offensively, BYU's executed very well. Eric Young with the uh, carry that time for the first down as the clock will stop on the movement of the chains, and uh, New Mexico try to hurry up and get something going, try to get a point or two on the board here. What you want to do is try to get that first first down. They were able to do it on a running play. Now, look for him to try to throw the football downfield. Case throws it down to Perlman. 
And Perlman's still going as he's dragged down to the 47-yard line. Stan Ross and Jamie Cook were there on the tackle. So another quick first down. Problem for New Mexico. They only have one timeout left. So they've got to be very judicious with their use of the clock. Stoney Case has to use the clock very wisely here to try to get us some points before halftime. 19 yards on that pickup as the clock running. 35 seconds left to go. And Case will go to the sidelines. Got his receiver. He's got to get out of bounds. A penalty marker. A late flag was thrown down in the uh, middle part of the field as a uh, Perlman made the reception over on the far side. He's had a nice day, Gavin Perlman. Yeah, the big tight end, David Sloan, was tied up downfield with the strong safety, John Pollock, and they're going to call interference one way or the other. Yeah, it's going to go against Pollock. That's kind of a kind of a mismatch. 6'2", 195 for the strong safety, and 6'7", 253 for the tight end. They haven't uh, gotten the ball to Sloan today, the big 6'7", tight end. Here's Perlman. That that was a hold right there. I don't even think that one was called. I think they called it downfield. They could have called it right there also Holy on Jamie Cook. Defense. Penalty is declined. Timeout. BYU. So BYU has taken a timeout. And so will we. 29 seconds left to go in the first half. BYU leads New Mexico 21-6. to six. for the Lobos. 29 seconds left to go. First half, they have one timeout remaining. Case standing tall in the pocket and passes incomplete. Intended receiver Manley Woods and a lot of pressure that time. Travis Hall, 56, was in there and John Ross, number 51, also there. Nice coverage downfield. Right at the last minute, Manley Woods decided to go behind the defender, and when he did that, the ball didn't have a chance. Stoney Cook thought he was, or Stoney Case thought he was going one way, going to break across the defender. He decided to go behind him. No way for the completion. Second and ten, trips to the near side. Good protection this time. Pass is caught there by Zach Wesley. He is able to get it out of bounds right near the marker. Looks like it might be just short of the first down. Patrick Mitchell, number 30, was there on the coverage. And I think, uh, Todd, they would like to try to get the six rather than the three here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Particularly with the problems they've had. They've missed an extra point. They've had a field goal block. I think they're going to feel much better about trying to get the ball in the end zone. But the first thing they're going to have to do is get the first down. It's third and one. I don't think that they'll run the ball here with only 18 seconds left and one timeout, but they've got to get a first down. Well, they get a bit of a break because they're going to bring the chains in right now to, uh, to measure. Case now, uh, 11 of 16, 120, uh, 121 yards, uh, one touchdown, one interception for the uh, senior from Odessa, Texas. Well, one thing they, they've said about Stoney Case, they said if you look at his 40 time or you just you, you look at some things that go on in practice, it's one thing. But when he gets in a game, he seems to throw the ball better, stronger, longer, outruns people. Yeah. It, it, it just the type He's a of gamer. kid. Yeah, just he the type really of kid that, that knows how to play football, knows how to win. And I don't know where this New Mexico team would be without him the last yeah. couple of years. Well, I'll tell you what, that, I know one guy who appreciates him as the head coach, Dennis Franchoni. I mean, he has stated very plainly, he says, I don't know that there's any quarterback in the country that's meant more to a team or to a program than Stoney Case has meant to ours. I mean, he is he's a winner, and he's done a lot for New Mexico football. That's come up just short. Third down and less than a yard. Mark hasn't started to run yet. Well, he was out of bounds. Play that's that's right. right. Absolutely right. And there's some movement there by BYU, so that'd be a good play by uh, New Mexico to draw them off sides. You're not kidding. That's a, that's a, <laughs> a pre-med student move there yeah. at quarterback. Draw them off sides, get the first down automatically, that's then you don't even have to waste a play or any of the clock. It's against BYU. Ula Foley looked like the guy that uh, jumped off sides, outside. Live ball foul against the defense, five yards, first down. Hard count by Stoney Case and right over the center. And it's hard to imagine a guy that's that's six inches from the football can't stay on sides. But now on first down, the clock is running. Now he's trying to get his man, Wesley, to go in the end zone. He got it! Touchdown, New Mexico! Beautiful play there by Stoney Case as he pumped at him, yep. told him to take off, and then he laid it in there. Yeah, that was by design. They had Patrick Mitchell out there in man-to-man -man coverage. Watch at the bottom of your screen. 
He's going to run a little hook and go. There's the hook, the pump fake by the quarterback, the cornerback Mitchell bit on it, and then a perfect throw to the back of the end zone by Stoney Case. Watch it again on isolation. Zach Wesley's going to run about a six-yard hook, turn, sell the play, and then go right by the defender. Excellent throw and catch, Stoney Case to Wesley. Now New Mexico will go for two. Case takes it to the right, directing his players, finds a man in the back of the end zone, tipped away. Goodness, it was Wesley again. Looked like he had the football yeah. momentarily, and then it was tipped away. Dermell Reed was back on the coverage. Yeah, watch. If he could catch it the first time, it's a two-point conversion. He gets both hands on it, but then when he bobbles it, Dermell Reed is able to get his left hand in there and strip the ball away. That's good reaction by Dermell Reed, number 19. The ball was where you want to throw it. When you throw to the back of the end zone, you throw it high so your guy can kind of go and make a jump at the back of the end zone, but good reaction by Reed. Well, second touchdown reception of the year for the leading receiver for the Lobos, Zach Wesley, the senior from Albuquerque, and Stoney Case now in his career has accounted for 74 touchdowns, 22 rushing, 52 passing. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I mean, you can you can talk about 40 times and arm strength and all that kind of stuff, but the bottom line is, can he get your team in the end zone? That's, 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 that's what it's all about. And, you know, nobody's timing Joe Montana in the 40 anymore, yeah. you know? <laughs> There's uh, Dennis Franchoni, who has really done a great job at New Mexico. The uh, WAC Coach of the Year uh, last year was at Southwest Texas State. Before that, had a great run up at Pittsburgh State in Kansas. So. And as... You know, seemingly turned things around. I know they're disappointed to be 0-3, but they lost a close one to Tech. They lost the game last week to SMU on the next-to-last play of the game. But, you know, this team doesn't play like an 0-3 no. football team. They, there is no quit in this team. They're a, they're a hustling bunch, an aggressive bunch, and uh, they're right back in this football game. 23. Fafita for BYU will uh, bring it back with five seconds left to go as the uh, Lobos uh, kicker, Vale, just squibbed it down there. So, five seconds left to go first half. BYU, 21, New Mexico, 12. Great response that time by New Mexico. After BYU scored late in the half, they come back, a great drive of their own, 80 yards. Only took them 45 seconds. They ran six plays in 45 seconds and got the touchdown. So, one more play here for the Cougars of BYU. And Walsh will just put it on the knee. So last week was the uh, first home opener that wasn't sold out in quite some time. It's not a sellout here today. Some questions about this BYU team, but right now they're looking pretty good, leading 21-12 at halftime from Provo. Ever since we got here, uh, this place is just immaculate. You take a look at the uh, kicker for the University of New Mexico, Nathan Vale. And he'll send it down, Bloomfield 34 and Cooper 83, back deep to receive the uh, kick to start the second half. In this Western Athletic Conference game, the uh, first WAC game of the year for New Mexico. They're 0-3 on the season. This is the fourth WAC game for BYU. They are 2-1 after losing to Colorado State last week. And Bloomfield will take it at the 34-yard line. Tefua Bloomfield turns it up around the 25-30, and he's knocked out of bounds. Chris Shelton came up to make the tackle. And the statistics uh, from the first half, and uh, you can't get them much more even than that. No, they are just about identical. The, the biggest difference in this first half has been the kicking game. New Mexico has really had problems. They haven't punted the ball very well. They missed the extra point, had a field goal blocked, and really the kicking game has been the deciding factor in the first 30 minutes. Look, look at the rushing yards, Todd, for New Mexico. 121. They came into the game averaging 134 a game. They got 121 in yeah. the first half. So they have found something that they've been able to do awfully well. And uh, it's been a guy, Abe Ghostin, who has moved from wide receiver to running back. Uh, the uh, fellow that had the chronic back problem that had to quit the team last year and uh, volunteered to the coaching staff with uh, Winslow Oliver being out with that uh, dislocated toes uh, to go to running back. And he has done a terrific job so far today. First and 10, BYU, 32-yard line. First play of the second half as Nowatsky comes in motion to the near side. And BYU is happy to run it. Hey, Mooley is driven back. 
as he gets up to the 34-yard line. Roy White, a uh, freshman out of Kerrville, Texas. So the uh, the Frosher are, are finding their way into the lineup. But also there, Clay Stapp, uh, 94, who's a redshirt freshman from Amarillo, Texas. So you've got to like the chances of New Mexico in two or three years with all these freshmen playing. Yeah, a lot of young, aggressive guys playing on that defense right now. And, and really the key to stopping a run is being able to get off blocks quickly. Shed your block and go and make tackles. And they're doing a better job of it in this ball. Second down and eight, penalty marker down. Willis still on his feet. Beautiful job of running as he gets across the 40 to the 41-yard line. The first down marker at the 42, Rod Coverly, number 23, the right side linebacker, came up to make the tackle. We're going to have an offsides on New Mexico. Pretty good job of using the snap count that time by quarterback John Walsh. And you're absolutely right. You know, Jamal Willis, I mean, he's the six foot three, 220 pound guy. I mean, you know, you're not used to seeing tailbacks here at Brigham Young that are kind of built that way. I mean, he is, uh, he's built for speed, he's durable, and, uh, and he's played exceptionally well in his career against New Mexico. When he was a freshman, he had over 100 yards. He had over 100 yards as a sophomore in 92, 149 yards in that ball game. He injured his ankle last year, didn't get to play against him very much, but uh, he is. He's really off to a great season right now. Yeah, had a career high 151 yards rushing against uh, Air Force and three touchdowns two weeks ago. You see 70 Evan Pilgrim, 6'5", 290, a senior from Antioch, California. He's 30 pounds heavier than a year ago. He went on a diet, six to 9,000 <laughs> calories a day. He ate a meal every two hours. I'd like to hang out with him. <laughs> Second down and three from the 39-yard line. Oh, you can eat. And stuffed right there. Coverly came up to uh, make the tackle. Boy, I'll tell you what, good job by the New Mexico defense that time as Hey Mooley had nowhere to go. Number nine, Charles Butler getting up slowly there, shaking his right wrist. The uh, junior from Dallas, the only returning starter in the secondary for the Lobos. Yeah, and they can ill afford to lose him because they've already lost Terrence Sharper, their strong safety. And we mentioned if there was a strong point to this defense, it was their defensive secondary. And now two, potentially two starters out of the ball game. Third down and three. Walsh wants to throw it, rolls out of the pocket. Sends it to the sideline, the intended receiver. Over on the uh, far side for BYU, Jason Cooper, number 83. And, uh, you know, they've got a problem over there. Johnston, uh, you know, got banged up a little bit before the half, and uh, Cooper wasn't even listed on right. their uh, depth chart. So with Doman out and Johnston a little bit banged up, they've got to go deep into their uh, wide receiver core, and that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Hard to imagine that Brigham Young could be short on wide receivers, that they would actually be better running the football than they are throwing the football. But right now, because of injuries and last year's graduation, uh, they're actually a, a little bit short on that position. Good look at the punter and the receiver there. As Young will make the catch at the 15, and there's nothing but blue shirts back there. I'll tell you, BYU has done a great job on punt coverage today. Let's check in with Dean. Guys, want to give you a recap of what happened in the BYU locker room at halftime. Basically, the players spent time with their individual coaches. Defensively, the coaches said, stick with the game plan. The only thing we haven't seen is the shuttle pass. Offensively, they said that we've got to go score on the first drive. That's what Lavelle Edwards told them right before they came out. So they were unsuccessful there. Sorry about that, yeah. Lavelle. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. You know, the thing about what Eric Young needs to do there, he's got to make a fair catch there because... New Mexico was selling out going for the punt block. If you're going for the block, then you have nobody to set up a return. He has no help back there, and to try to run the punt back is pretty much futile. It was a 46-yard punt, and on first and 10, Ghostin will take it. Look at him go. Ghostin's got the first down across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Good job of running by 22, the sophomore from Sacramento, Abe Ghostin, as Stan Ross and Jamie Cook came up to make the tackle after 17 yards on the pickup. And what an effort by Abe Ghostin. I'll tell you what, if I'm Dennis Franchoni, I'm going to find whatever I have to do, whether it's acupuncture or massage or whatever, to get his back ready to play week in and week out because he is really a nifty little back coming out of that deep eye formation. First down, New Mexico, 33-yard line. 
Just underway, second half, a little mix-up in the backfield, but uh, Shelton got the handoff, and boy, I'll tell you, this offensive line for New Mexico, who are these guys anyway? Well, this is the all-you-can-eat offensive line. That's Matt Tyner on the far left. You notice the colorful jams, Andy Gleason, Brandon Turner, Alex Crowder, Ryan Mummert, Calvin Allen's in there playing today. Tyner's mom made these, because these guys have a hard time finding clothes. It's called the hog line of clothing, and uh, she makes those colorful jams for uh, her son and the uh, the other players, and I'll tell you what, they are doing an outstanding job of blocking today. This is a line that averages six foot four and 312, 312 pounds. <laughs> Second and one, K standing in the pocket, going downfield, and the intended receiver, Manly Woods, it was overthrown. Good coverage back there. It looked like uh, Jamel Reed had it. You know, we talked to Dennis Darnell, the offensive coordinator for uh, New Mexico earlier in the week. We asked him, you know, what's the strength of your offensive line? He says, well, really, pass blocking. They're, they're better pass blockers than they are run blockers probably at this point. But they've done a great job opening some holes in the running game. And, and BYU's run defense is a good run defense. Coming into this game, they've only given up an average of 2.9 yards per carry. That's been one of their real strengths this year, their run defense. Third down and one from the 42. Chase will pitch it back. And Ghoston's going to be close to the first down. He sort of uh, tried to pick a spot there rather than just getting that uh, one yard that was needed. Patrick Mitchell came up uh, to make the tackle. It's going to be close enough that they're going to go ahead and say it is a first down. Well, you see, Stoney Case, he thought the fullback was going to be there to make a pitch, uh, make a fake on the handoff. There was no back, and so the yeah. option really got disrupted. He thought there was going to be a fullback to kind of fake the defense and hold the defense a little bit. He stuck the ball out there, but maybe, there was nobody there. Maybe that's why Ghoston was sort of sitting there where they're going, what do I do now? Yeah, that play didn't, uh, didn't look all that good, but it got the yardage it needed. Lobos have uh, had some injury problems this year, especially on defense, but Turner, Crowder, and Mumbert up front uh, have played every snap so far this year on a first and 10 from the 43. Case under pressure. He's going to try to throw now. He tucks it under and gets out of bounds at the 46-yard line. He was run out by Jamie Cook over on the near side. And you know what? He did a great job there because Jamie Cook came on a strong safety blitz, and he was unblocked. He had a dead beat on Stoney Case. Stoney Case was able to kind of dip his shoulder and elude the tackle and then outrun him to the sideline and pick up more yardage. I mean, that was a that was a great job of, of knowing that the rush was coming, dipping the shoulder, getting away from the strong safety blitz. Second down and seven for Stoney Case and the New Mexico Lobos. 11-15 to go, third quarter. The draw play, that's Young. Plenty of room. He gets it to the outside. He needs a block. Inside the 30, down to the 25-yard line. And a penalty marker is down. A penalty marker down on the far side. A great job of running by Eric Young, the senior from Broken Bow, Oklahoma. A transfer from Northeastern Oklahoma A&M, which is a perennial power in the junior college ranks. He's just 5 foot 9, 182 pounds, and getting a lot of playing time because of Winslow Oliver. He's accounted for six touchdowns this year. Four rushing, two receiving. That ties him for third in the nation. During the run, Holdy on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Yardage gain still gives New Mexico a first down. I think they got a wide receiver again blocking downfield at the very end of the play. And, and again, they still have their first down, but lost some valuable yardage on that penalty. Watch, watch the left hand side of your screen in the corner. Again, it's Zach Wesley, number 28, just has his hands on the jersey. Now the defensive guy kind of went down little acting job, but still the hands were on the jersey, and that's where the holding that's call came in. What you would have called an aggressive foul right there. First and 10, 38-yard line. Stoney Case checking off at the line of scrimmage. Case fires it in at the 30 and run out of bounds. And with a little bit of authority, Perlman made the catch. Corey Cook uh, was the guy that made the tackle. Cook not only a good safety, but uh, the highest grade point average on the team at 3.76, a major in English. You see the BYU home attendance ranked in the top 20 in the nation for 12 straight years. Average attendance since 82, 65,000, but just 60,265 today. Didn't sell out yeah. the home opener last week. And six and six last year, even though they did win the WAC and go to a bowl game, six and two in conference, 
you know, people are getting a little restless around here. Talk shows have been on, Walsh in particular, and uh, they need to come up with a win today. Second down and three. The balance of power shifting in college football. Ghosted right there up the middle to the 20 to the 19-yard line. And Abe Ghosted once again behind Brandon Turner, the center. Alex Crowder, the right guard, he finds the room and he picks up the yardage, and this kid is playing one heck of a football game. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, this says a lot for the conditioning of this offensive line, too, because they're really still coming off the ball exceptionally well, getting a great push, and, and they've got big, wide bodies, for one thing. Then they have big, wide splits, and they're really spreading out this Brigham Young defense, and Ghostin and, and Young, whoever's in there, is doing a great job just finding the hole. Well, in the pass-happy whack, and with these two pass-happy teams, they're running the football today. Ghostin, 11 carries, 78 eight yards first and ten from the 20 the handoff this time to Shelton and Shelton will get a couple down to about the 16 yard line where John Ross the uh, junior from Napa Idaho makes a stop you know the other thing that this does and, and I'm sure that the coaching staff in New Mexico is happy is it keeps their defense on the sidelines not only resting them but it allows the defensive coordinator Fred Blyle to get them together talk to them make sure they're all set on the assignments on the adjustments they made at halftime this is an excellent time-consuming drive for New Mexico and you know Blyle would love a win today he coached at Utah State was 0-6 against BYU and is 0-2 yeah. since he's been at New Mexico as a defensive coordinator on a second and six, Case has got to get rid of it. He finds his big tight end, Sloan. Sloan all the way down to the five-yard line, and another first down, and another great play by Stoney Case, who saw the pressure coming and got rid of it. When you run the bootleg, the first thing you have to do after you make your fake as a quarterback is to get your head and eyes around right now. Make the fake, find out where the rush is. He had to pull up. He was able to just buy himself enough time to make the throw to his tight end. But if he's late and getting his head and eyes around there a little bit lazy, he gets hit right in the mouth. Great job by the quarterback getting his head and eyes around on the bootleg. BYU's got a player down. That was Randy Brock putting the pressure on Stoney Case that time. Case 14 of 21, 159 yards. And it looks like Dermell Reed, the uh, cornerback from Oakland, California, the junior, who was down right on the goal line and being attended to by the uh, BYU trainers. So with 9-11 left to go in the third quarter, B uh, BYU leading 21-12. Reed's going to be helped off the field, and it appears to be his left leg. Both these cornerbacks for BYU are not very big guys. They're both listed at about 165, 170 pounds. That time trying to tackle that big tight end, David Sloan, well, 260-pounder. Sloan, 6'7", and 260 from uh, Fresno, Community College was a basketball player who's been converted into a football player. Greg Steele has checked into the game, number five, a freshman from Temple, Texas. First and goal from the five-yard line for New Mexico. Case checking off at the line of scrimmage. Perlman, the lone wide receiver on double tight ends. Case will tuck it under, and Case will get it down to about the two-yard line. Good sure tackle in there by Corey Cook, the free safety, number 17. He, Case thought he saw the end zone. I mean, he has a nose for the end zone, but Corey Cook did a nice job just tackling him up high and pulled him back away from his own end zone. Let's see Nebraska got in the 70s today over Pacific. Pollock was also in on the tackle. Gain of two that time. They spotted at the three-yard line. Second and goal from three. Clock running, 8-20. Left to go third quarter. Twelfth play of this drive. Power formation now. Full yes. house. Young giving you a couple different looks. Case wants to throw it. He had the man wide open in the end zone and overthrows Chris Griffin. 81, the backup tight end. Nobody was near him. Yeah. And I don't know whether Griffin jumped too late. It didn't seem like the ball was thrown that high. But nonetheless, an incomplete pass. I think Stoney Case could not find Griffin at first. He looked there at the first point, could not find him. When he did see him, he felt like he had to rush the throw, and he made a little bit too high of a throw. But Griffin was open all the way. Stoney Case couldn't find him in the back of the end zone. A good call on second down, but now they're faced with a third and goal from the three. The backs are Shelton and Ghoston. Young, number four, also back there, and he's the motion man. Play action again. They're going, trying to go to the same thing. Touchdown, New Mexico. Sloan was the man. The tight end, David Sloan, with the touchdown reception, his first of the year, as Stoney Case takes his football team on a terrific drive 
as they make it 21-18. You know, they went to the same play. That was the exact same play, the same motion out of the backfield, the same fake to the tailback. This time, instead of going to Griffin in the back of the end zone, he went to his big tight end right in the front of the end zone. Now, Bale will attempt the point after. Stoney Case will hold Coverly the snapper. And it's good, so they finally get an extra point, and with 8.03 to go, they make it 21-19. Okay, this is Griffin. Now, the play before, he was wide open, okay? He was covered that time. He comes off of him, comes down to his secondary receiver. Watch. Same play. Crossing of the two tight ends. He looks to the back of the end zone first. It's not there. Then he goes to Sloan. Big touchdown. Boy, the big man just pushed Muirbrook off him and got himself open there. 21-19 from Provo. Sloan, and it's 21-19 BYU with the two-point lead as Nathan Vale will kick it off. They flew a Bloomfield, 34. Jason Cooper, 83, back to receive the kick. Coming to Bloomfield, and he's going to bring it out from about seven yards in. Bloomfield across the 20, penalty marker down. Bloomfield across the 40 to the 43-yard line, but a penalty marker's down as Bloomfield took it from about seven yards deep in the end zone to the 43-yard line. That's two kickoffs in a row that New Mexico has done a very poor job covering. Bloomfield with two big returns, but this one's going to come back and really a very fortunate penalty for New Mexico. So that'll nullify the return by the freshman from West Valley City, Utah. It's a Fua Bloomfield. Look at New Mexico. 13 plays, 84 yards. Time of possession just Illegal over five minutes. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, half the distance to the goal line, first down. And they're doing one of the things they set out to do, which was to control the football offensively. Tomorrow night starts with America's Funniest Home Videos and the new comedy On Our Own. Then after an all-new Lewis and Clark, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sharon Stone star in Total Recall on the Sunday night movie. Parental discretion is advised, but it's a great way to end the weekend tomorrow night. <laughs> On ABC. Arnold. Arnold. Hans and Franz. First and ten. Ball back at the eight-yard line for BYU. Willis trying to leap over the top. Gets to about the 12. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Thank you, Roger. Joining us now is Gifford Nielsen. Gifford, congratulations. You will soon be inducted into the Na National College Football Hall of Fame. It's quite an honor, you know, you think about something like this happening to you when you're a football player here at uh, BYU. And you just, I mean, it's really... Uh, really tough to think about that something like that happening to you it's just uh it's, it's just an amazing roger we'll go back to you and visit with gifford in just a moment okay second down and six from the uh, 12 yard line walsh on the play action will roll to the far side he's got some pressure eludes one tackler now throwing on the run to willis just overthrows him and let's go back to uh, that former BYU quarterback. Uh, Dean, I guess he got a start against uh, New Mexico in a game here. He did. In fact, it was 1975. You came off the bench. You rallied the team to a 16-15 victory. And uh, then it was first-team first All-American for BYU. Yeah, it was really interesting because it was against New Mexico. And it was a really close game. It was a beautiful evening like, uh, like you have here in Provo, Utah. And to see the way things turned around, it was just incredible. And to see how this football program has grown not only here locally but nationally is just an inspiration too. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Back to you, Roger. Thank you, Dean. A lot of quarterbacks today. Blevins, Blackledge, uh, Gifford Nielsen, third and six. And penalty markers uh, go down. Yeah, movement by Eli Herring, the right tackle. A little bit anxious on that pass protection situation. Herring, six foot eight, 335 pounds when he moves. Prior to the Herring. snap, fault start. On the offense, five yards, still third down. You can see the frustration in the face of John Walsh right there because he, as a quarterback, knows the difference between third down and five and third down and 10 or 11 is very significant. It's much harder to convert those longer third down situations. McGuire and Nowatsky are the wide receivers as they move the ball back to the seven-yard line. Just to follow up on uh, Giff Wilson, he's a sportscaster in Houston, Texas now. He's Retired, done very well after his playing. All these quarterbacks looking good in the broadcast. Third down and 11 from his end zone. Pressure on Walsh. He's able to get rid of it, and he overthrows his intended receiver, Kaipo McGuire. 
And that's going to bring up a fourth down and a punting situation in this young New Mexico defense. You can just see the confidence and bit. enthusiasm building. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, they've gotten a big boost today by Damon Burris returning to the lineup. Now, they didn't get the sack, but he got good pressure up the field. They forced John Walsh to maybe throw the ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to. The receiver was not completely out of his break. And Damon Burris is kind of a veteran guy on this defense that's really given them a boost today. Boardman standing at the back of his end zone. That's Eric Young, just shy of midfield for New Mexico on a fourth down and 11. 7.08 to go. Third quarter. This time they should set up a return for the, for the returner rather than going after the punt. Boardman with a high punt. Young waving for the fair catch, and he takes it at the 47-yard uh, line. So good job by Young that time. And with 7.02 to go, third quarter, the Lobos with good field position, down by two. Bo Utah and the Lobos of New Mexico have got their best starting field position of the day as they'll take it first and 10 from the 47-yard line. Todd, look at those scoring drives. Just what uh, Dennis Franchoni wanted to do today. Yeah, really eat up some clock, long scoring drives, let your defense rest, and let your defense spend time with their coaches. That last defensive series by New Mexico, their best of the game. Case wants to go deep. He's got a man open. That's Woods, and he makes the catch inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Manly Dexter Woods the fourth. Well, I'll tell you what. They've run the option with some effectiveness today so far. That for the first time, they go play action off the option. Stony Case is going to come down the line. He's going to show option and back right off. He's got man-to-man -man coverage outside. And again, the guy who supposedly can't throw the deep ball puts another one on the money. And I'll tell you what, credit Manly Woods for really fighting for that football because Patrick Mitchell had a hand on it. Woods wanted it more than he did. Manly Reginald Woods the fourth. <laughs> Excuse me. He's averaged in his college career over 20 yards every time he's touched the football. First and 10, 14-yard line. Good time for an inside run. That's what they do with Shelton. He's still battling. He gets about a yard. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Roger, Miami's home winning streak in jeopardy. Washington comes out in the second half. Damon Heward's 75-yard touchdown pass. And then Frank Costa is picked off by Russell Hairston. 34 yards, the interception return for a touchdown, 18-14 they lead. At Michigan, the Wolverines have just got a touchdown from Tyrone Wheatley. Now the all-time leader on Michigan, 17-14 they lead. Back to you. Thanks, John. we got a second and eight from the 12-yard line for New Mexico. They trail it by two as Woods goes in motion to the far side. Gersten, a lone setback. Go to Ghoston. He's got it. He's got a blocker in front of him. Ghoston inside the 10. Cuts it back. Touchdown, New Mexico. What a block by the Eclipse. The Eclipse was out leading that screenplay. All 363 pounds of him. Got a great block out in front. Take a look. Perfect design play. They invite the rush. Stony Case lets the rush come to him, and then he slips two linemen out. Now watch Eclipse. Get a block right on the sideline. Just wipes out about three people. One of his own guys. Sloan and Wallace were out there, two yep. leading the way. That was set up perfectly. And Ghoston, who had one pass reception coming into this game, he hadn't rushed the football this year. He has now caught a touchdown pass. He has run effectively. And New Mexico, leading by four, will go for the two-point conversion. Stoney Case has now accounted for 10 of New Mexico's 14 touchdowns this year. Quarterback draw. Yeah, quarterback draw, and it's wide open. If he can scoot, he did it. Case gets it in there for the two-point conversion. This is a fired-up, enthusiastic New Mexico football team that now has the momentum in this game with 5.50 to go, and they lead it by six. This is the pass from Case to Ghoston, and look at the big man, the all-you-can-eat offensive line out there in front, and it's just a stroll for Abe Ghoston. Bell's gone after number 200. Todd, how many of those Penn State wins were you involved in with Joe Paterno? About 30, 32, 33 <laughs> of them. We, we won a lot up you there, did. I know that. When you were the quarterback there, you did win a lot. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. As you look at those guys with 200 wins, the coaches with the longest tenure at schools are Paterno and Lavelle Edwards and Osborne and Bowden and Terry Donahue. You know, I mean, it kind of goes hand-in-hand, hand, right? You get to hang around for a while. 
That means you're winning and things are going well as Bloomfield will take it. He's going to bring it out again. He is fearless coming out of the end zone, but he's running awfully wide this time, and he can't get it. Just past the 10 to the 12-yard line, number 19, Scott McGarrahan, a reserve defensive back. And look at this New Mexico team now. You can just sense the attitude change. And how about Colorado State coming from behind to beat San Diego State, 19-17, and now CSU in the driver's seat in the whack with a couple big early season wins. Low-scoring game won by defense. Defense is what won it for him here last week also. We've got 5.44 left to go in the third quarter. New Mexico leading 27-21 against BYU as we've got a penalty being stepped off against the Lobos. I didn't see a flag go down. Well, that's a personal well, foul. It is too. a big one. Personal foul. Face mask on the kicking team. 15 yards. First down. This is another one of those late flags. I mean, that, that came down. Yeah, and it's really the first kick that they really covered. That's right. <laughs> and they get the face mask penalty. First and 10. John Walsh and the Cougars at BYU will go to the air, looking out of the backfield, but finds his tight end instead. That's Chad Lewis. He had Willis swinging out. Lewis cut in and made the catch. There's Chad Lewis, 6'6", 220-pound sophomore from Orem, Utah. You know, and you mentioned something about this New Mexico defense and the team right now. There's a little more of a bounce in their step. Take a look at this. 1980, the last time New Mexico won, they sacked Jim McMahon nine times. And I'll tell you what, their pressure on quarterback John Walsh today has really stepped up. And they haven't won in Provo since 71. So a uh, little history possibly in the making. A lot of time left to go. Just over five minutes, third quarter. Second down and five. Willis gets it. Willis with room across the 40 to the 42-yard line. First down there for Jamal Willis and BYU. Terrence Sharper, who is back in the game, number 37, came up to make the tackle. You know, we mentioned at the top of the show how important it was for Brigham Young to get the ball in the hands of Jamal Willis. They started out the game that way. It kind of fell off of it. I think they need to really start getting him the football, find ways to put the ball in his hands, either running it or throwing it to him out of the backfield. They haven't really tried to throw him the football too much today. First down and 10, 41 yard line. Inside handoff to Haymuli. Tries to string it out. A good job right there by the New Mexico defense as they took it to the boundary and they weren't uh, going to let him get outside at all. Yeah, I think the offensive line was expecting Hamuli to take that ball inside between the tackles. He thought he could bust it outside. Only problem, there were no blue shirts out there, only white shirts. It was he against the defense by himself. Willis today with 13 rushes for 69 yards has not caught a pass. And uh, Roger French, their offensive coordinator, told us yesterday they'd like to get him the ball about 30 times a game. So they're not quite up to speed in that category with, uh, I would have to say, their best offensive player. Yeah, that's kind of playing left-handed, really. I mean, if you don't get the ball in his hand 25, 30 times a, a, a game, you're not really giving yourself the best shot. Second and 10, and they'll throw that other side to Nowatsky, and Nowatsky, look at the power of him. He gets it across midfield to the 49-yard line where Art Celestine makes the tackle along with Daniel Johnson. And next Saturday on ABC's College Football, Colorado will meet Texas. UCLA battles conference rival Washington, plus other regional coverage. You want to check your local listings for the game in your area and call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Pacific, right here on ABC's College Football. So, got some good matchups today. Got some good ones coming for you next week. Interestingly, uh, Bryce Doman is starting to work himself into the receiver rotation now for Brigham Young. He's not in this play, but the play before he was in the ball game. That didn't play at all in the first half, but kind of a a little bit of a state of duress now for BYU. On third and one, Walsh will just keep it, and he'll get two yards, and he's got the first down. So BYU, maybe their strategy now is to use up some clock and keep their defense off the field, because New Mexico has obviously figured out how to score on it. Yeah, they've done a great job of, of mixing the run in the pass, and, and really, I'm surprised that New Mexico has had greater success running the football against BYU's defense as opposed to the other way around. Uh, really, New Mexico coming into this game, giving up almost 300 yards a game rushing. They've played pretty well against the run here today. First and 10, 47-yard line for the Cougars. Walsh, the quick out. He finds number 83 over there. That's Cooper. And he gets it down to the 31-yard line. So, little-used receiver Jason Cooper getting some action and making the catch. 
Johnson 44 and Sharper 37 over on the tackle. Well, this is a great read by John Walsh. See him looking to his right. They came with a corner blitz. He saw it all the way, just raised right up and threw it out there to his receiver. That's the safety coming over. Has to come all the way from the middle of the formation to get into coverage. I'll tell you what, BYU quarterbacks, year in and year out, are very well schooled in reading blitzes and knowing where to go with the football. That time, John Walsh right on top of it. First and 10, 33-yard line, 317 left to go in the third. Walsh can't get the handle on it, finally does. That play was designed to go to Willis, yeah. and uh, Walsh was fortunate to keep it on his hip. Uh, Dan Coverly, 49, and Damon Burris, 75, were there to mix things up uh, for the Lobos of New Mexico. Yeah, it looked like he got the snap all right, but as he was leaving the uh, the area by the center, that ball kind of got bobbled. It ended up back on his hip, and he's very lucky that he maintained control of the football. That'll make it second down and seven, so the broken play picks up three. A newly back in there along with Willis. And on the play action, Walsh going down the middle. He's got his receiver, Milotsky, at the 19-yard line. So... BYU doing a good job sort of just picking away, and it seems like they're having success in the middle of the field. Yeah, uh, nice job of pass protection by BYU. They give a nice pocket for John Walsh to sit in. Watch after the play fake. He's going to have a nice pocket, and he's going to look down the middle of the field. He's got his tight end clearing out the middle of the field, and Nowoski just kind of finds that soft spot right in the middle of the defense, right there where he can make eye contact with his quarterback. Nowoski, five receptions, 56 yards, 220 left to go third quarter. the shotgun. This looks like a sweep to the left. Sweep to the left with Willis. Well, they're going to get it to Willis. He's wide open at the 15. Willis breaks the tackle inside the five. Loses the football. And they're going to say BYU keeps possession. New Mexico, I think, maybe recovered the ball, but they were out of bounds. Willis just a great job trying to find the end zone. We mentioned that they've got to get the ball to him. He is just, a, he's an electrifying kind of player. He can make plays. Just a simple little curl right by, by, by the back, coming out of the backfield, and Walsh is looking for him all the way. Now, if you're the New Mexico defense, you shouldn't be letting number 29 just run wide open in the middle of your defense. I think Sharper got this fumble, but he might have been out of bounds. Yeah. You see the good stick right there by Matt Simmons. Yeah, watch. As Sharper has the ball, his feet and legs are yeah. out of bounds. I mean, he actually recovered it, but possession remains with BYU. First and goal from the two-yard line. He newly in motion. Willis will get it on the right side, and he drives it into the end zone for the touchdown. Fifth rushing touchdown for Jamal Willis. As he took Coit 41 and Jamel Woods 18 along for the ride. Well, we mentioned they've got to get the ball in his hands. He's six foot three, 220 pounds. Watch him duck the shoulder and just deliver a blow and keep the legs driving right through two defenders into the end zone. Roger French said the thing he hasn't done is exactly that: dip the shoulder and get the tough yard. I'll tell you what, that's as good as you can do it right there by Willis. Lotter to come on to attempt the point after. And it's good. So with 158 left to go here in the third quarter from Provo, Utah, BYU takes the lead 28-27. And maybe that high-scoring game, maybe that game that's going to end on the last team that scores is going to happen after all today. I'll tell you what, Jamal Willis really became alive in that drive and credit the offense and then Roger French, the coordinator for BYU, knowing, hey, we got to get the football in his hands. He had a lot of touches in that drive, and every time he touched the football, he made something good happen. That was, uh, by the way, 33 consecutive point afters for uh, Lauder. Well, in the uh, Western Athletic Conference today, Colorado State has come up with a victory against San Diego State, 1917, the final. Wyoming plays Utah just up the road in Salt Lake City this evening. Fresno State, very good Hawaii football team. They beat Cal uh, a week ago. And Air Force and UTEP, a couple teams that are struggling to play this evening. Take a look one more time at this touchdown coming right into your living room. Now watch the power of Jamal Willis. When he gets the football, watch right at the last minute, dip the shoulder and delivers a blow. And look at the leg strength as he just drives himself, he wills himself into the end zone. That's a great three-yard run by the tailback. 
to kick it off for BYU is this uh, sort of up and down crowd. Now you're with me, now you're not. He's back into it. And Woods and Pagador back deep to return the kick for the Lobos in New Mexico. It's a low line drive kick that Manly Woods will bring up the middle. And he's corralled at the 15 yard line by a host. Of, now is it? There's a couple guys coming in late, but I didn't see any flags going down. Let's go down to Team Blevins, see? Guys, as, as you know, cramping becomes a problem late in ball games. It used to be salt tablets was the answer, but that's not the answer anymore. Bananas was tried at one time. Now, New Mexico says pickle juice is the answer. Four ounces of pickle juice followed by a lot of water. <laughs> no craps. <laughs> but, but can you talk? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Take a rest, will you, Dean? <laughs> we'll come back to you later when you get your lips moving again. First and 10, 16-yard line for Stony Casey Lobos in New Mexico. And I'll tell you what, there was nothing for Eric Young, and now this BYU defense is all fired up. Travis Hall, 56, and uh, Ulafala, 98, in there on the stop. Yeah, the two inside linemen, the two interior linemen got great push, great reaction on that particular play. They both go about 285, 290 in there creating some havoc. Do you ever used to when you, you know, play football and you get some blisters on your hand? I used to, in baseball, I used to soak my fingers in pickle juice to make the calluses tougher. I never did Yeah, you never that. tried that, huh? I certainly never have drunk, tried to drink pickle juice. Second down at 17. That's Woods in motion. Case, pump fake, going up top to Woods. He's got him open, just overthrows him. Yeah, they had it, Roger. The thing about it is, when you don't put enough air under the ball, you have to make a perfect throw. That time, Stoney Case could have afforded to maybe put a little more loft on that ball. If you put more loft on it, it doesn't have to be the perfect throw. They had what they wanted. The cornerback bit on the little pump fake again, but just a slight overthrow by Case. That's a big game for New Mexico in more ways than one. It's uh, the first time uh, they've been on network television almost 10 years. The last time was also against uh, BYU back in 1984. And uh, unfortunately, they were defeated 48 to nothing in that game. I think the uh, result obviously going to be a lot closer today. The uh, Lobos four of eight on third down situations. This is a third down and 17. Dangerous situation here for New Mexico. What you really don't want here is a turnover if you're New Mexico. Case with some pressure throws it downfield and incomplete. Boy, Patrick Mitchell did a great job that time covering Zach Wesley as Wesley had to go very high for the football. Muirbrook was in there yeah. putting some pressure on Case. Muirbrook is the guy who, again, forced the quick throw, the high throw. Now watch as Case is going to roll out. They're going to get a good block on the end of the line, but here comes Muirbrook. Puts a nice hit, and Case knows that hit's coming. The ball sails on him a little bit, and Wesley can't come down with the high throw. Good job by Muirbrook, really attacking the quarterback once he left the pocket. Now, Kobe Mansell will punt it. He's standing on his own goal line. His first punt was 38, his second punt 29. So the Cougars should get good field position. He dropped the ball and had to kick it hurriedly. It's an end-over-end -end kick, and uh, BYU sort of giving chase, and they decide to let it go as Jason Cooper decided wisely not to pick it up as... The ball's down at the 42-yard line, so a good break right there for the Lobos. Yeah, and New Mexico's actually very lucky they didn't get a penalty for having an illegal man downfield. Normally when the punter drops the ball like that and is late getting the kick, it disrupts the timing of the punt. They're actually lucky that they didn't get a penalty and, and ended up getting a decent punt out of it. Ooh, yeah, those Jayhawks uh, got in the 70s today against, uh, that's the University of Alabama at Birmingham. That's not to be confused. 45-yard punt there, and uh, Sam Houston State leading uh, Steve McNair and Alcorn in the third quarter. First and 10, 42-yard line. John Walsh, perfect 5-for-5 five five in the last drive. Gets it underneath to his tight end, and right up near midfield, the catch made by Chad Lewis, Chris Carroll, and Levi Rockmore. They're on the tackle. You know, when, when Brigham Young quarterbacks have been really good and, and this offense has really been successful, they've always thrown to their backs and tight ends very well. Now, coming into this ball game, they hadn't been doing that quite as well. 
tonight or in this ball game today Chad Lewis much more a much more important part of the pass offense and uh, catching a lot of balls right in the middle of the defense well I think that's why this school's always been attractive for uh, quarterbacks who feel like they can play pro football because they do have such a varied attack thrown to the tight ends thrown to the backs what they would do in the NFL as the clock now runs down and we've completed three quarters of play for Provo Utah and we'll return with more action between New Mexico and BYU after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Seven, they've got it second and two right at midfield and Willis the ball carrier has the first down and a lot more as he gets to the 41 yard line. Rod Coverley 23, Terrence Sharper 37. Sharper leads this New Mexico team in tackles this year. Nice design on that play, too. They put the inside receiver on motion to take him outside just to widen the defense and then ran the counter trap. That's Abe Ghoston on the sideline there. He, uh, he was a moment ago on his knee, and some of the players had to help him up. He's still, the back really gives him a problem. It's a chronic back problem. They moved him to wide receiver to take him away from the running back position where he gets more pounding. Now he's back at running back, but he's doing it for the team. First and 10, 41 yard line. Willis has got it again, and Willis is going. Down to the 32 yard line, close to the first down where McGarrahan, number 19, makes the tackle. And now it looks like the BYU offensive line is winning the battle up front. There's McGarrahan, just a freshman from Arlington, Texas. You know, part of becoming a good football team is learning what it takes to win games on the road. And you can see with that, those numbers there, those are tough, heartbreaking losses. And, and part of that is because of the youth of this team. When you're playing a lot of young guys, you got to teach them. They've got to kind of learn how to win games on the road. You see 32 guys, freshmen and sophomores, on the travel squad. That's 14 points there folks if you added that up is uh, hey Mooley will take it on the right side inside the 30 to the 29 and let's send you to New York and John Saunders John Roger following air McNair and Steve having a difficult time as far as his team goes but watch here out of the pocket out of the shotgun chase to the end zone 10 yards he has eight carries for 20 yards and a touchdown 42 to 23 is down and look at the passing stats with still more than a quarter left Roger Thanks, John. Keep an eye on that young man. Obviously very talented. But, Too bad uh, he can't play defense, well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Willis, 16 carries, 89 yards. This will be the 17th time he carries it. He's over 90 yards now and close to another first down. Clay Staff, 94, another freshman from Amarillo is over there to make the tackle. Chad Lewis has been very involved in the passing game, also getting a good block on the outside right here. Gets a little bit of help from the fullback out to Waya, but still a nice job by the tight end. That's the key block when you're running that stretch play to the outside. The tight end has to take that outside linebacker out away from the play. That time, Chad Lewis, a good block. Uh, BYU on their last possession with an impressive drive for the touchdown. They've got it this time with good field position. They're moving down once again. 13-28 left to go in this game. Second down and two. Does that sound familiar? That's the way it's been as Willis gets it with room. Another first down. Willis still on his feet. And he's knocked out at the 11-yard line by Daniel Johnson, a sophomore from Lubbock, Texas. And good blocking up front by uh, Pilgrim and Edwards and Hanshaw. Yeah, great job by Hanshaw and Pilgrim pulling out in front of that play. I mean, they, they showed good mobility getting out along the outside. It was just That was the old Green Bay Packers sweep where you pull two linemen off the line of scrimmage and lead the play. I'll tell you about Hanshaw, a senior from West Valley High in Spokane. He was the co-frontier league lineman of the year in 1987 with guess who? Steve Entman. <laughs> Not a bad player. He's been around for a while. <laughs> First and ten. 13-yard line, it's Willis, and Willis dragged down from behind at the 8-yard line. Dan Coverley was over there to make the tackle, and now this BYU offense wearing down this young, inexperienced Lobo defense. Yeah, they're really working the right side now. They're running behind their tackle, Eli Herring, 76, and again, the tight end takes his man completely out of the play. That's good form blocking by Chad Lewis, just turning them to the outside, pushing them out of the play, and then Willis able to cut up right inside that block, and, and they're really attacking right now the left side of the New Mexico defense. They've got to try to shore that up over there. Uh, Clay Stamp also went on that stop as Willis now has rushed for 111 yards. He's out of the game. Hamuli's in there on second and four. He's got it, and he is up the middle for the touchdown. Seven-yard touchdown run for Hamu Hamuli. 
Well, I'll tell you what, this, this defense looks fatigued right now. Give credit to the BYU offensive line. This is really a gut check for them. They ran the football extremely well on this drive. They ran to the right. Now they came back to the left, and Hamouli finds the end zone. Great job blocking by the BYU front five. Lauder to attempt the point after. And that is true, 34 in a row. And with 12.34 left to go from Provo, BYU has moved it out to a 35-27 lead. Now let me get this straight. As they double-team the nose tackle, the left guard's going to come off and pick off the linebacker. A great surge and just a nice alley for Hamuli to just walk right into the end zone. That's great work. Combination block by the center and the left guard. Yes. Eight play drive, seven, seven running yeah. plays by BYU. Jim Edwards, Tim Hanshaw, the center and guard. And, uh, you know, Edwards really a guard who's playing out of position at center, but uh, one of their most consistent linemen. As uh, Lauder sends it down to Manly Woods. And Woods trying the left side. He swings it out too far, and he is stuffed back at the 11-yard line. Down there on the coverage, James Higgins. And Monday night, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will feature two superstar quarterbacks. We're talking about that guy, Jim Kelly, the Buffalo Bull Bills, and the Denver Broncos, John Elway. But the problem is for Denver, they haven't won a game this year. And I don't know whether it's offense or defense or, or both, but uh, they are struggling. Nonetheless, uh, Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time, and maybe the Broncos will get it going. Buffalo struggled a little bit early in the year in their opener, but uh, has played pretty well the last couple of weeks, and that's always a dangerous offense with uh, Jim Kelly running the show. Once again, tough uh, field position for New Mexico. 12-25 to go in a game. First and 10 at the 11-yard line for Stoney Case and the Lobos. They'll draw it up the middle to Young, and he just waited a little bit too long as Greg Pitts, 99, one of the first men in there to hit him. The senior from Provo, Utah. Well, we talked earlier about the bounce and the step of New Mexico. Now it's kind of shifted to BYU. Look at Pitts stand up the right guard right in the hole, doesn't move an ounce, waits for his team to come. Now Pitts doesn't get a piece of the tackle, but he stuffed the hole, and that's what made the play. Loss of two, Case standing in the pocket. He's stumped. No safety. He was inside the one-yard line when he was hit. Travis Hall looked to be the first man to get to him. Hall came into the game with three sacks on the year. Well, what you hope to do with your front four is get pushed by your two inside guys, and then your speed rushers come from the outside. But really, that was John Ross, one of the inside guys, who just kept, kept fighting on that play. He got good push on the right side of the defense, got into the legs of Stoney Case, and... Travis Hall was there to finish him off. Man, it is right there on the line. Third down and 20 from the goal line. Stoney Case got to make something magical happen, and he can't do it. And New Mexico's got a big problem as they're faced with a punting situation deep in their own end. And this is exactly what New Mexico didn't want to happen. They played a very solid second and third quarter, but... Uh, has been the case they've struggled in the fourth quarter this year yeah they really have and, and and Brigham Young has played exceptionally well in the fourth quarter I mean that's that's been the time that they've played well and right now that the key for New Mexico the punter it's a it's a formation where you have everybody in tight it's a much sh shorter snap than normal normal your punt snap is 12 to 15 yards this is only about a nine yard snap you got to catch it and kick it right away that's Mansell the punter and he gets it out of there. Cooper is going to field it at the 46-yard line and bring it back upfield. And Cooper gets it down to the 31-yard line. Great field position for BYU with 10.56 left to go. Six to go, and Todd, what are they going to do here, man? Well, I'll tell you what, I, this is a great opportunity to go play action and try to get the ball into the end zone. I'd keep an eye on Jamal Willis. First and 10, 31-yard line. Walsh looking for Hamouli. He's got him at the 10. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown, BYU. <laughs> Penalty flags go down for the celebration. Thomas and Celestine were over there, and Walsh put it in perfectly.
went with the split backs, and I thought they'd go to Willis, but they actually went to the other back, Haymuli. This was kind of an out and up. They brought him out into the flat, then they turned him upfield, and really, uh, the ball was a little bit underthrown. Arch Celestine, number 30, had a chance to make a play on it, but great concentration by Hamuli to stay with After the football. After the touchdown, unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense, 15 yards that will be assessed on the kickoff. Got to watch out for that celebration. You just can't uh, make it too vocal or uh, too demonstrative. Hamuli's third score of the day. Yeah. He's uh, been a big part of it. You know, you mentioned about BYU doing a good job in the fourth quarter. Outscored their opponents 24-7 coming into this game. You know, meanwhile, New Mexico has struggled in the fourth, being outscored 37-24. As Lauder to uh, attempt the point after. And he's got it. So BYU coming on strong here in the late going. They've moved it out to a 42-27 lead. And from Provo, let's send you to New York and John Saunders. Roger, you have the offensive show in the whack. No surprise there. And Michigan doing it as well. Todd Collins airs it out to Amani Toomer, 65 yards, as he gets behind the secondary. Two-point conversion was no good. 26-14, the Wolverines lead. Roger. Thank you, John. You know, those uh, tough games sort of wear on you after a while. Maybe Colorado's running into that. A big emotional victory against Wisconsin last week. And, uh... Take one more look at this now. Hamuli was the back on the left. They run two receivers down the field, and then they kind of stagger it, and they send Hamuli down the numbers. Nice job of concentrating on the football, come, kind of slowing down to make the catch, and then taking it into the end zone. Walsh opened the half 0 for 3, seven straight completions since then, but they've been running the football so well. It's really sort of set everything up for them. And New Mexico allowing 38 points a game, 102nd in the nation in scoring defense now. BYU with 42 as the 15-yard uh, penalty tacked on here, so they'll uh, kick it off from the 20-yard line. So the uh, Lobos still a lot of time, 10.49 left to go. Should get some good field position. Terrence Sharper and Steve Pagador back to receive uh, Lauder's kick. It's a very talented backfield with Willis and Hamuli back there for Brigham Young. I, I've been very impressed with, it, with the way that they've run the football today, and that makes the job easy for the quarterback when you can run with that kind of effectiveness. That's, that's a great kick there. A sharper took it at the six-yard line and still on his feet, but nailed at the 34. That's the only problem when you get that penalty. Now you got a big head start running down there to meet that <laughs> offensive player, and he got sandwiched at the 34-yard line. Fafita, who's been on a couple of plays, uh, came down. Hale was also there. You know, New Mexico, they've been three plays and out their last two possessions. They had scored on their previous two possessions. That was something they were trying to avoid, but they had terrible field position the last two times they've had the ball. Pretty good field position now, and, and very critical that they put some points on the board. Uh, you know, in this conference, and, and with the, the kind of history that this conference has had, no lead is, is too safe. But this is, uh, this is real crunch time, I think, for New Mexico. Kesa puts it back on the option, and nothing doing right there with Shelton. Guess who? Shea Muirbrook, the sophomore from Norco, California. You know, they've had some success running the option because the line has been able to kind of pick off Muirbrook as they've come down the line. That time, he avoided the blocks in the interior of the offensive line and was able to flow to the football and make the play. And really, he's a guy that, if you don't get the block on, he's going to make a lot of plays on the option. In other words, they figured it out. Huh? <laughs> well, I think he got a good head start on that one. He read the option quickly and got out of there before they could get a body on it. Lost a three on that play. Second down and 13 for the Lobos. And Case with a lot of pressure eludes one man, throws it out to the near side. It's dropped by Chris Shelton. The freshman from Palestine, Texas, had it at his knees and dropped it. Near Brook once again and Randy Brock applying the pressure. So now another third down and long, third and 13. Really, the pass rush has really stepped up for Brigham Young here in this fourth quarter, particularly late in the, in the third quarter and the early part of the fourth quarter. Good pressure on the outside. Travis Hall and Randy Brock yeah. really coming hard from the corner. I'm a little surprised New Mexico in these last few possessions has opened up on first down with that option, and uh, they've gotten themselves in an immediate hole. Hasn't been working for them in the second half. They've got a third and 13, and Case has got to go back to pass. Throws it downfield, overthrown. Way overthrown, well covered that time. The intended receiver, Zach Wesley and Jermell Reed. And that's five straight 
incomplete passes, but in defense of Stoney Case, uh, he's been throwing with his back against the wall in second and third really long situations. And he got hit pretty hard on second down, and that third down play, Ooh, he look really at kind of kind of rushed it. Well, I'll tell you what, they're making a statement, huh? Against yeah. Miami. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, that is one of the most difficult places to go in and win that there is. I mean, yeah. 57 straight, I think Miami's won. They were going for to break the record today against Washington. Now they got the fake punt on fourth down. The fake punt to Hodling. And at the 42-yard line, they've got the first down that was in the playbook. Backup quarterback Jeff Hodling from Artesia, New Mexico, the up man. Got the snap and a good call at the yep. right time for the Lobos. Could not have been called at a better time. He's the personal protector between the punter and the snapper. Great block on the outside. The tight end crashed the wall down. And I'll tell you what, Hodling, he knows what to do with it when he got that out there in the open field. And, and really a great call by Francione at, uh, or Francione at the right time. I mean, they needed a big play. 26 yards on the pickup for Jeff Hodling, and that gives the Lobos life with 9.32 to go. They trail at 42-27. Out of the shotgun, Stoney Case. Inside pass. Incomplete. Yeah. Incomplete. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Roger, Arizona State against Cal. Fourth quarter, first and goal. Tyrone Edwards just stays in bounds. His second touchdown of the game. The Bears get the win, 25-21. Roger. Thanks, John. I'll tell you, Bruce Snyder, former Cal coach, now at Arizona State, is really struggling, having a hard time getting things turned around in uh, Tempe. Uh, Muirbrook was the guy that busted through that time to take that, care of that play. You know, they, the, BYU has made some nice adjustments in their pass rush. They, they've kind of squeezed down the lanes. He, Earlier in the ball game, New Mexico is doing a good job with their splits and those big bodies, getting a lot of good creases and really stretching that defense. They've really kind of closed the lanes now for New Mexico. Second and 10, Case will find the receiver, and they've got the first down to the 31-yard line. Patrick Mitchell came up to make the tackle on Zach Wesley, the Lobos' leading receiver. That sort of stuff, I guess, is what I was uh, missing there in a, a couple of series for uh, New Mexico, a couple of quick hitters like yeah. that. Yeah, and really, and you have to do that because BYU has countered with a pretty good yeah. pass rush here in the fourth quarter. So you've got to do some things to kind of take the edge off of them. Some quick throws, maybe even a good time for a draw. Get him coming up field. Give the ball to Ghoston. He's been quiet here in the last couple of series. First and ten, handoff right up the middle. And, uh, gain of about uh, three yards there. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Dean? Roger, it's an emotional day for the fellow over here to my right. Retiring after 30 years as trainer of New Mexico, Larry Willock. He's going to the Air Force to be on their training staff there. He says he's been catching himself looking at the mountains and looking at the faces of the players on New Mexico, and it's emotional. I know I'll never forget him because he's the guy who gave me that pickle juice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dean. You know, we might want to check on Abe Ghoston because we've seen Shelton in there in the backfield for the Lobos, and Ghoston hasn't been in for a while. And second down and seven, Case throws it near side. has got his receiver over there, Steve Pagador, leans and gets inside the 20 to the 19. He'll have the first down. Dermel Reed, the junior from Oakland, California, came up to uh, make the tackle as uh, Bama moves their record to 4-0, along with Auburn. They are also at 4-0 as we start to get some finals in college football today. So now... Good change of philosophy mm -hmm. here by Dennis Darnell, the offensive coordinator of New Mexico, going with some more of the quick throws because they were starting to get after Stoney Case a little bit. Good pass rush. This is a way of slowing that rush down. First and 10 ball just inside the 20-yard line. And that's Case who decides to take it on the option, gets maybe a couple of yards as Greg Pitts, number 99, comes over to make the tackle. That time they had Eric Young and Chris Shelton in the backfield. Uh, Ghoston has not been back in in some time. So uh, the man who's really been effective for him, yeah. Abe Ghoston, who has, suffers from some chronic back trouble, uh, not in the ball game right now. And New Mexico, they say it's a gain of one. Second down and nine. Let's call it the 19-yard line. Seven and a half to go here from Pope. Middle screen. They swing it out to Young. One block. Still on his feet, inside the five. Good job right there by Eric Young, the senior from Broken Bow, Oklahoma, as he got a good block from the freshman, Matt Tyner, number 53, who's playing with a sprained left ankle. 
excellent execution. Now, when they run the screen, they have the middle screen from the wide receiver coming from the left, and they have the halfback screen out this way. The first time they threw the middle screen, this time they come to the tailback. He's got a couple blockers out there in front of him, and a good decision by Stoney Case to go to the wide side of the field with the tailback rather than come back to the wide receiver. That's a, that's a well-designed play. You actually have two screens going on at the same time. First and goal, ball at the five-yard line. They'll give it to Young, hole on the left side. Touchdown, New Mexico! So the big fourth down play on the fake punt and the run by Hodling gave him a second chance, and the Lobos take advantage of it as they move down, and Eric Young with his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. Yeah, they run over the left side. Two tight ends that balances the defense. Great block by Ryan Mummert, number 77. He was the left tackle. He came down on a double team and opened up a nice hole. Good block by the tight end, and Young finds the end zone. Now they'll go for two. Trailing by nine with 7.20 to go. Young's alone setback. The receiver in motion to the near side is Manley Ricks. Hard rush on Case, and they try to throw it inside. Just not enough time. Ula Folly was the man that came busting through that time. And here's the blocking up front by New Mexico. Great job by Tyner and Turner and Calvin Allen as Young makes it in there. Bloomfield bring it out again. <laughs> no, not this time. You know, it's interesting, Roger. Normally, as a game plan, when you go into a game, you have one, maybe two plays designed for a two-point conversion. This is the third attempt for New Mexico. They tried to go with that same screen, fake it one way, come back. The reason the play was stopped, Mike Ulafali, number 98, had such quick penetration and great pressure on Stoney Case, he never had a chance to really set up the second screen. But that was the opposite side of the, of the play that they ran on third down where uh, Young picked up the nice first down. That's a double screen. That time, Ulafali, great penetration. 7.20 left to go, and the Lobo defense needs a stop here. They trail at 42-33. Those 33 points by New Mexico, the most they've scored against BYU since 1970. Willis will take it right side and gets his six yards. I mean, it's just automatic with him. Let's check in with Dean. Guys, Abe Ghoston, the running back wide receiver at New Mexico, is having back spasms. He's wanting to get back in the ball game. His trainer said that they might hold him out. I said, Abe, are you going to play? He says, yeah, I'm going to play whether they want me to or not. So we'll see if he gets back in the game. Well, Abe Ghoston was a big part of that uh, yeah. New Mexico offense in the second and third quarter when they took the lead in this game. Right now, they trail it by nine. 641 left to go. They'll go with Willis. He's got blockers in front. He's got the first down. He's got as much as he wants as he goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Let's go to John Saunders, John. Roger, Steve Stenstrom of Stanford came into this game without having thrown an interception. He's thrown two in this game. This one is picked off by Tony Bowie of Arizona and should have been tackled there. That's one. Another missed tackle. A third. And then the blocking takes over. One final block frees him to get into the end zone. 49 yards. 34 to 10 is the lead for Arizona. Roger. Thank you, John. Well, the Desert Swarm uh, isn't suffocating this year. They're giving up a few points, but it's still a pretty darn good defense, as you saw right there. They're a very good defense. You know, the question about them is, do they have enough offense to really contend for a national championship? We're coming out for the uh, Lobos of New Mexico, Charles Butler, number nine, the uh, junior from Dallas, Texas, grabbing that right shoulder. Well, they just cannot afford to have any more injuries on defense. So. New Mexico really is going to have to try to create something in their, in their run defense now. You know, a lot of times when you blitz, you don't just blitz to get after a quarterback. You can run blitz, too. And right now, Brigham Young is kind of having their way in the running game. I think New Mexico has to blitz to try to stop the run. Numbers on Willis averaging 6.1 yards a carry. Averages just about 6 yards a carry on the year is number 22, Mark Atuaya. Takes it around the right side. Boston Thomas and Brett Luxinger over there on the tackle. And want to remind you, college football coming your way here on ABC Sports. Next Saturday, some good games. Colorado, Texas, UCLA, Washington, Michigan, and Iowa. Virginia Tech on a roll this year. They'll play Syracuse in the Dome and Georgia Tech and North Carolina State. It's regional coverage next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific time. Right here on ABC Sports.
Second down and ten. No pickup. Atawaya. That time some movement inside. Penalty markers going down. Yeah, good use of the snap count by John Walsh, and I'll tell you what, that's a that's a huge play. It's second and 11. You get five of it back right away, and, and at this point in time, you're trying to just hold on to the football and eat up the clock. Snap. We had offsides and contact by the defense. Five yards, still second down. Keep in mind, New Mexico, even though they trail, they've got all their timeouts remaining. And we saw how quickly Case moved the team uh, down right before the end of the first half. As you look at the New Mexico head coach, young man Dennis Franchoni. I say young man because he's younger than me. By a couple of years, Ravel Edwards. Second down and five. Inside handoff. That's there. That's a first down. Inside the 45 to 43. Atuaya with the big pickup. And right now it's set for the sidelines. Dean, you got a special guest for us? I sure do. And you know she is special. Patty Edwards, the wife of uh, Lavelle Edwards, we met last night. Fascinating lady. You've written a book. You just graduated from college. You founded the American Football Coaches Wives Association. You're a tremendous lady. Well, thank you. Thank you. Lavelle's 200th may be coming. Oh, I hope. I hope. <laughs> you know, I'll be glad when the game's over. Guys, I'm going to send it to you and come back if we can in just a moment. OK, Dean. Thanks. Cougars have it first and 10. Less than five minutes to go. They seem to be content to run the football right now. They've been doing that successfully here in the second half. Checking away from strength, running from the left side. And Willis, let's go back down to Dean. 32 of these BYU players are married, and you have a why, you, you counsel with the women. I do. Uh, I have a, a dinner every fall. We have a lot of new brides every year, and it's more fun to date a football player than to be married one, and so I try and adjust them to what is required of them and, and tell them that their, their main responsibility to the program is to see that their husbands graduate. And um, there are fast friendships that are made during among the wives. Thanks a bunch, and the congratulations of 200 times. Thank you very much. Back up there. Second and five, 39-yard line for the Cougars. And they'll run it again to Willis. The hole's there. The first down's there. Willis high steps it. One man to beat. Touchdown, BYU. Thirty-nine yards on the touchdown by Jamal Willis. Well, they ran the counter trap. Take a look at the blocks at the point of attack. Great block by Hanshaw as he kicks out, and then the burst of speed by Jamal Willis. Runs right through one arm tackle. I'll tell you what, this guy's carried the ball a lot. Still has fresh legs here late in the fourth quarter. You could see that burst, and that's what makes him special. When he gets in the hole, he has that burst to take it to the end zone. 23 carries, 174 yards, two touchdowns today. Lauder to attempt the point after he has got that one. And with 3.53 left to go here in Provo, BYU has moved it out to a 49-33 lead. And, folks, it's been the run today, which yep. has been the significant factor for the Cougars. And it's been that man right there, Jamal Willis, who... They needed to get the ball in his hands. They have done exactly that. It's been primarily on the ground. And it's interesting to note that Willis and John Walsh are the two youngest starters on the BYU offense. Both will turn 22 on December the 12th. Of course, a lot of these BYU players obviously taking their missions. And, you know, it's an older team. But these are two of the youngest ones. And I uh, want to remind you that uh, if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. Scores and highlights from around the country. That's coming up, time permitting. BYU today, they've rushed for 265 yards. They've passed for 220. You know, it was interesting. I was watching Lavelle Edwards' coaches show this morning, and they, he was asked about the, you know, what sets up your offense. Does the, does the pass set up the run? Does the run set up the pass? He says, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. He goes, whatever's working, we'll just go with that, and we'll set it up. Well, I think that's exactly what they did today. They found out that they could run the football on this team. Everybody has had success running against New Mexico, and uh, a great job blocking by the offensive line, and Jamal Willis is a very special player, and I think Lavelle Edwards knows that. 
That 174 yards for Willis, uh, a career high today. So with 3.53 left to go, 49-33, BYU leads it. I'll remind you once again, coming up on ABC's uh, Monday Night Football, you know how this is the 25th anniversary. I, well, somebody suggested they should break out those old yellow blazers for the <laughs> announcers. I thought that would have been a, a nice little touch. But anyway, the Broncos and the Bills coming your way as Case uh, comes to the near side and finds his receiver, Steve Pagador. We've got to go into a real hurry-up mode now. When you're trailing by this many, 16 points, you've got to go into a hurry-up mode if you're Stony Case. If you can get the ball out of bounds, do whatever you can to stop the clock. But basically, for the rest of the time that they have the football, it's a two-minute offense. Well, you know, it's 16 points, right? Yeah. So two touchdowns, a couple two-point conversions. Ties better than a loss when you're 0-3. Well, that's for sure. But they, they still have got to hurry up and get one touchdown in quick. Here's that double screen. Oh, oh. Going deep down the other side. Is the catch made? Yes, what a catch. Unbelievable by Steve Pagador. I'll tell you what, I like this offense. I like what Dennis Franchone he has done with this offense. They've thrown that double screen a couple times. That time they faked the screen both ways. Watch, he fakes it one way, fakes it the other, and then throws down the field. I mean, it's another option off that same play that they've run about a half a dozen times today. Look at this catch. And a great catch by Pagador. And again, Patrick Mitchell is there in good position, but the receiver fought him for the football and won. First and ten, Case rolling to the right, on the run again, and that pass is incomplete. Took a bounce at the 20-yard uh, line. The intended receiver over there, Pagador, once again. He's a, a junior college transfer from West Valley up in Santa Clara, California. You know, this New Mexico team has really had to rely on, on junior college players. Uh, they've had to rely on a lot of guys who transferred in from other schools that, uh, you know, maybe for one reason or another, things didn't work out there. Uh, you know, Dennis Franchoni's trying to recruit the high school kids. New Mexico is one of the smallest states, and it's yeah. tough to recruit down there. And so he's got to go elsewhere. And he's trying to get some kids, I think, like a Stony Case who got passed over by all the Southwest Conference schools, maybe a guy who feels like he has something to prove. That ball was deflected and nearly picked off by Travis Hall. And Case is limping as he... Uh, Makes his way back around the 45-yard line. You know, you get some guys that maybe were passed up by some of the bigger schools. You get them into your program. They feel like they come in with a little bit of an attitude, and they play that way. And I'll tell you, what, you can you can win football games with guys like that, guys like Stony Case. Arizona's done a great job yeah, here. They just sure Big Tony out there is recruited that way. Third down and 10 now at the 32-yard line with 3.29 left to go. This is four-down territory for the Lobos. Trailing by 16. Gets rid of the football. It's got Perlman, but man, is he stuck. Jermell Reed was right there to nail him at the 14-yard line as Case went down hard one more time. Randy Brock was all over him. This is a good throw, a good route, and a great tackle by Jermell Reed. Watch, the ball is perfectly thrown, and then great timing by Jermell Reed, and his helmet goes right on the football. I mean, you can't. You know, he just did it perfectly. The timing was perfect, and the position of his headgear oh, yeah. right on the football popped it out. So let's see what tricks the Lobos have left with 3.22 to go and a fourth down and 10 from the 32-yard line. And New Mexico, looks like they're going to take a timeout. Yes, they are. So 3.22 left to go from Provo will return. BYU leads New Mexico 49-33. Last minute, he pulls back and throws. Take a look. This play takes a long time to develop. Wesley can't get off the jam. But then by the time that Case has left the pocket, no coverage had come over to help. The strong saver, the free safety, Corey Cook, was late getting over. Watch. He eludes the rush. Now at the last minute, knows where the line of scrimmage is, pulls back, and makes a nice throw to Wesley. And I'll tell you what, it's heads up play by the quarterback, Stoney Case. And a nice job, Wesley, once he got off the jam, to keep his pattern wide and give a good target for the quarterback. Second touchdown reception for Zach Wesley. They go for two now. They've got to have it. 
Quarterback Case, draw. Quarterback draw. Can he get there? Badly, and he can't do it. You know, I'm serious. You run out of plays for two-point conversions. I mean, you, you, you never would expect to try four times to go for a two-point conversion. They tried to go with the quarterback draw. That's the second time. Now, I'm a little bit surprised they went with the quarterback draw because he's been limping with the bad ankle here in the fourth quarter. I mean, if he's healthy and fresh legs, maybe. But when he's limping a little bit, you might have a better shot, uh, you know, maybe getting the ball to, to Eric Young or doing something with somebody that uh, has got a little better mobility right now. Valiant effort, though, by Stoney Case. No question about it. Well, you know, when your name's Stoney, sometimes you're expected to do a lot more than any one person can, too. Uh, he's a... That puts him in a 10-point uh, a situation with 3.16 left to go. Three sixteen left to go. Onside kick here is well. A, you have to now, it's particularly when you must. didn't make the uh, when you didn't make the two point conversion. Now you need two scores to to even tie and, and possibly win. So you've got to go with the onside kick now. And what you hope for is that the ball on the onside kick will take one small bounce and then pop up in the air, and your guys have a chance to run down and, and you know see if you can come up with a play, but. Usually you can get better onside kick bounces on AstroTurf than you can on grass. The ball doesn't have a tendency to bounce quite as uh, quite as high on grass as it does on turf. So Vale comes near side with it, doesn't uh, get the required yards, but a BYU player had it. Yeah, yeah, and it's New Mexico football. That ball did not go 10 no, it yards, didn't. but because a BYU guy came across and touched the football, the ball belongs to New Mexico. And it looked like McGarrahan, number 19, came up with it. Watch, they put all the men on the left. They looked like they were going to the left. They came back. Now, this ball has to go to that yard line. It never goes there. But the BYU guy came across and tried to recover the fumble. Spencer Reed, Spencer 41, Reed yeah. couldn't come up with the football and, and good heads up play by New Mexico. Well, here we go again. Stoney <laughs> Case now with a school record five touchdown passes today. 23 of 40, 329 yards. Wesley's been on the receiving end of two of those touchdowns. And so 313 left to go. 10 point ball game. That's why they call it the Wacky Wack. Mm -hmm. Case near side, has got his man Woods, steps out of bounds at the 44-yard line. left to go. We've uh, just received word that Steve McNair of Alcorn State has separated his right shoulder in that game against Sam Houston State today. First degree separation. So that is bad news for a young man who's had a great year and uh, of course a lot of talk about the Heisman Trophy. Uh, so unfortunately Steve McNair with uh, what could be a season ending injury. His case wants to go deep. He's got a man and once again Woods has had his man beat deep and they just can't get together. Yeah. Well, you know, and that was bump and run coverage by Jermel Reed, and they have not played much bump and run coverage. And Stoney Case read it right away, went to the right guy going to Woods. But again, when you're throwing that deep takeoff pattern, if you put a little more air under it, you've got a little more margin for error. If you throw a flat trajectory pass, it almost has to be a perfectly thrown ball, and that time a little bit overthrown by Case. Second down and 10. Ball at the 44-yard line. Hand off to Young. Young with some room to the outside. Young heading for the sideline. Good heads up play right there by Eric Young. He saw that he didn't really have a chance to cut it upfield, so he just went right for the boundary. Yeah. Get the first down and then get out of bounds. And you can see New Mexico with two timeouts remaining. BYU are, are hoping that they don't have to use any of their timeouts. But New Mexico, two big timeouts left. And as you mentioned, a good job by Young, first of all, getting the first down and then going out of bounds. Young, seven carries, 68 yards. Is, uh, uh, Abe Ghostin is uh, Dean reported with some back spasms. Hasn't been back in. First and 10, 33-yard line. Case hanging tough in the pocket. Wide open. Wesley, can he get there? Yes, touchdown. Third time today that Stoney Case and Zach Wesley have hooked it up for a TD. Six touchdown passes. 
for Stony Case, 33 yards. And Todd, how do you like this whack? Boy, this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, Zach Wesley, this is what, his third or fourth of the day? Third. And he is wide open. Nobody around him in the middle of the field. They ran three receivers deep downfield, brought Wesley on a delay crossing route. And I mean, he was just wide open and had a clear path to the end zone. Now they're going to go for the extra point here. 49, 45, 248 to go. I'll tell you, give the offensive line credit. They oh, did yeah. a good job that time. And Stoney Case hung tough in the pocket. Now they're going to, now they've changed the teams. Now they did have the, uh, the kicking team out there. And now they've got, they're going to go for the two points again. I'll tell you what, I, I maybe run the option and try to pitch the ball out to, to Young. Let him run the football. Maybe go to the tight end. Now they're trying to come inside. Look at he broke through. Can he get in? He does. The two-point conversion. That's the play they tried to run last time yep. as Manly Woods was able to take it in. And, folks, we got a two-point ball game with 2.48 to go. And BYU is sitting there right on it. They know this play is coming. And watch. They're going to fake the screen to the tailback to the right. Now they're going to come back to the wide receiver screen, and they're waiting for it. Right there, Bigram Young is waiting, but they miss a tackle, and then Manly Young shows a nice burst to get into the end zone. I mean, BYU knew that play was coming, missed the tackle, and couldn't stop it. <laughs> this is different Isn't here, it something? Don't you, you love this? <laughs> Joe Paterno would not survive. No, in this he, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have <laughs> such a good time, would he? I'll tell you one of one of the great football games that, that I've ever seen. The 1980 uh, Holiday Bowl, SMU and BYU. Jim McMahon, the quarterback. Craig James, the running back for SMU, and uh, BYU was uh, down by, I don't know, 45-20 with like four minutes or something to go. McMahon brings it back to win it. And look at Lavelle Edwards, the second week in a row looking for win number 200. Nothing comes easy anymore. There's just nothing easy. <laughs> okay, now, hey, do you kick it off here? Do you go for the onside kick again? Uh, well, I think you, I think you got to try the onside kick again. You know, you haven't stopped the running game, and that's what BYU is going to try to do. You know, it's a two-point game. Remember this now, in this ball game, New Mexico has had one uh, point after touchdown block. They've gone for two points and failed three times. So we're talking about four points that, that are definitely the difference in this ball game right now. They've scored enough touchdowns, just haven't converted on the extra points. Nathan Vale, can he do it again? Now he's going the other way with a nice high bounce. Ball's loose. BYU got, I'll tell you, that was a great onside kick right there. That's what you want. You want one short bounce, and then it hits the ground and goes up in the air. And, and that ball was up in the air for a long time. Chad Lewis looked like he recovered it. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything. Now, watch this kick. One short bounce, and then boom, right up in the air. And New Mexico can recover it right now. That ball bobbled. Nowatsky was there, couldn't get a handle on yeah, it. Yeah, you want your receiver, Nowatsky, to be the first guy to get his hands on it. He doesn't come down with it in New Mexico. Very close to coming up with that one. Last year, BYU beats New Mexico 34-31. They beat San Diego State 45-44. They beat Hawaii 41-38. They lost to Fresno State 48-45. Utah State beat them 58-56. This is just run of the mill for them. You know? <laughs> Willis has got it. He's tackled after a gain of about three. Well, you don't have to use your timeouts yet. What New Mexico wants to try to do is they want to get a good stop here, force about a third down and seven, third and eight, then maybe call a timeout. Of course, Brigham Young wants to wants to get another first down. Two first downs and Brigham Young wins the football game. That's what they're thinking right now. Forty-nine, forty-seven. Just a few moments ago that it was a 16-point BYU lead as Willis gets it. Tripped up momentarily. Well, I'll tell you what, good job there by the New Mexico defense. Rostin Thomas, uh, 34. Butler, number nine, was also in there. And, folks, Washington now leading by 11 in the fourth quarter against Miami. I'll tell you, you can't go any farther in the United States for a road game than, than Washington at Miami. 3,003 miles on that road trip. Here's the timeout now by New yeah. Mexico. New Mexico is going to take the timeout with 1.59 left to go. It'll be a third down and seven when we return to the Cougars. 47, 159 left to go. BYU's got it third and seven at the 43 of New Mexico. John Walsh, the quarterback. Somebody better cover the halfback coming out on the left side of the formation here. And that's Willis. Can they make the tackle? Beautiful move by Willis. He's got the first down. 
inside the 35 to the 33. I'll tell you, he is a big time back. Yeah, he's got those instinctive, you know, those intangibles, the ability to make somebody miss, that quick burst, and then the ability to move laterally and make somebody miss. Great job running on the sidelines. Well, the genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Stoney Case for New Mexico. Six touchdown passes, 375 yards so far. And from BYU, Jamal Willis, uh, a career day for him. Uh, last count, he is... He was over 180 yards, which is a career 177, let's say, right now, and a couple of touchdowns. So those are our Chevrolet players of the game. Congratulations to them. First and 10, it's Willis again, and he has stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Good job right there by number 39, Blake Irwin, as the Lobos with just one timeout remaining, and the clock uh, now stopped. And as uh, New Mexico, yeah, Third they have timeout. used their last timeout. You know, of all the great runs that Jamal Willis has made in the ball game, maybe the best play he made was right there when he eluded the tackle on a little yep. flare pass and picked up the key first down. Okay. Well, while we've got a moment right now, let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Roger, as you just mentioned, Steve McNair is knocked out of the game here. Really a late hit by Chris Hall. He's out of bounds. That knocks him over. Then his teammate falls on his shoulder. He's now the third all-time on the list of total offense in the NCAA history. 48-23, Sam Houston State has the lead. And Miami's 58-game home winning streak will come to an end at the hands of Washington. Roger. Thank you, John. A uh, big day for Damon Hewitt and Pauline Kaufman, of course. Uh, they they kind of rallied around Kaufman. Uh, I think yeah. they sort of, let's get him the Heisman. They can't do anything because of probation this year, so the Huskies, uh, impressive uh, down at uh, Miami against the Hurricanes. Well, the situation here in New Mexico, no timeouts remaining. Second down and 10 for BYU. 143 left to go in this game. And you want your running back to stay in bounds now. Jamal Willis I'll has done a good what, job doing that I'll tell you what, there's a real problem so going on over here with uh, one of the wide receivers for BYU. He didn't know whether he was supposed to be in the game or not as Willis breaks the tackle and nearly gets the first down. Looks like he's just about a yard short. I'll tell you what, they, uh, Chad Lewis looked like he was running off the field, came back on, and then finally Walsh told him to come back in as Willis is going to be just short of the first down as the clock continues to run. So... At the moment, a, uh, a valiant comeback attempt by New Mexico. Looks like it's going to come up short. Willis now with 186 yards, and a penalty flag goes down, and the clock will stop with 106 left to go, and a penalty against BYU. Now, they were having some problems on the sideline. Yeah. They either had too many players on the field, you had an illegal substitution on the offense, five yards, still third down. There was some confusion with Chad Lewis on the previous play uh, running back and forth, so now this sets up a, a, a five-yard penalty, so that makes it a third and six. The clock is stopped with 106 to go. Yeah, that, that's a critical mistake because uh, at third down and one, and the way Willis has been running the ball, you figure it's easy for him to make the first down. Now they've got to they've got to pull a little better play out of the bag. Shadows starting to cascade over the field here. Willis, the ball carrier, and he is tackled at about the 27-yard line. He's going to be just a couple of yards short of the first down. Rostin Thomas and Blake Irwin, number 39. I'll tell you, Irwin, the redshirt freshman from Boulder, has played a fine game as we are under a minute now, and it's going to be fourth down. 75, Damon Burris comes off, and they want to get a little bit more quickness in there as John Wingate, 95, checks in. I think what BYU is going to do right here now is they're going to run the clock all the way down as far as they possibly can. The play clock is down to five seconds now. They will call timeout with one second left on the play clock. Just use as much time yeah. as you can and then call timeout. You know, New Mexico, normally if you score seven touchdowns in a ball game, that should be enough <laughs> to win the ball game. But 
you know, they scored seven touchdowns. They were one of two on PATs, two of five on two-point conversions, and the block point after touchdown on their initial touchdown is really what triggered the whole well, thing. Well, off because, the upright. Yeah, they, what, yeah they, they, they miss it, they or they miss it off, off the, upright. the upright. Now they have to start going for two right. just to try to keep it close, See, and, they, and they that, don't make the two-point conversion. That's why I think the two-point conversion, I think early in the game, because uh, you just don't know how the, the, the flow of the game is going to go. I mean, the two-point conversion is not a sure thing. As you mentioned, there's only a couple of plays you can really run. And, uh, you know, so you missed one extra point. I mean, it's early in the game. I, I, I think you can be second-guessed a little bit for going for that too early in the contest. As you look back now and see all the touchdowns you've scored, and and you're only behind by two. Well, and also in this conference, the chances of, you know, wanting to go for two and make it 14-14, thinking you can win a game like 17-14, you're not going to win many no. games in this conference that way. I mean, it's going to be these shootout-type games. Colorado State won a game, a, a close one, 19-17 today. But for the most part, your games are going to go like this, where you're going to score a lot of touchdowns, and you've got plenty of time to catch up in the football game. You wonder how many close games uh, Lavelle Edwards has left in him. You know, I mean, he's, he's trying for win number 200. There's a few New Mexico fans here today, not many. So fourth down and two, 26 seconds left to go. You know, I hate to sound uh, cliche -ish, but but this has to be one of the best 0-4 football teams that you've ever seen. On a Hail Mary pass, Colorado has beaten Michigan 27-26. Fourth and two. Walsh with a long count. Draw him off sides. They're not going to run a play. And now they're going to call timeout again. Good discipline by New Mexico's defense. Good job by New Mexico to hang tight. Yep. And uh, Lavelle Edwards, uh, he has seen a lot through his years uh, in the Western Athletic Conference. Uh, uh, he has been riding uh, shotgun. He, he has had the best view for a long time, but obviously things are going to be tougher this year. Colorado State much improved. Utah much improved. Hawaii's got a good team. Let's go to uh, New York and John Sonner. John, what happened between Colorado and Michigan? Roger, an unbelievable finish. Colorado trailed throughout this game, but Cordell Stewart at his own 36 tosses this one towards the end zone on the Hail Mary. It bounces off a Wolverine defender into the hands of Michael Westbrook for the touchdown. The game winner, the Buffs, pull it out, 27-26. Oh, John, wow. thanks. Man, you love seeing that, don't you? Did you ever throw one of those? I've thrown them. I've never completed <laughs> one, though. I mean, I've thrown a few interceptions on Hail Mary that, plays. That's but. why you've always got to be lucky yeah. instead of being good sometimes. You know? Well, I'll tell you, you just, what. I mean, that you know, the, the percentages are not great on a play like that, but offensive receivers are always in, a, in an advantageous position when, it, when the ball is going up for grabs because they're used to going up and catching the football. And, uh, fourth and two. Willis has got it. He has got the first down. He's still on his feet, driving inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. And that'll do it for BYU and Lavelle Edwards. And this senior from Las Vegas, Nevada, who has come up huge here today. Yeah, he got the water on him. I don't think he's going to be real happy about that. Is he smiling yet? I don't see a smile there yet. It depends on how cold that water is. Come on, Lavelle. Well... I mean, it's not as so much getting wet as Whoa. it is. You can see the ice in that, too. It's the ice and the cold that really makes that tough. And the clock's going to run down, and that is going to do it from Provo. Lavelle Edwards gets win number 200. Willis, 29 carries, 204 yards. A valiant comeback by New Mexico and Stony Case, who threw six TD passes today. A new New Mexico record. BYU 49, New Mexico 47 for D. Along with Patton.